Hey guys, it's me, the world's best Pokemon player master Nuzlocker guy. As much as I love sitting down to watch a good old fashioned Nuzlocke video, I always wonder to myself, what if I put in over a hundred hours of effort into the editing and turns this Nuzlocke of Pokemon Renegade Platinum into more of a theatrical production? But for real, if you enjoy this, please like and sub. I spent so long doing this. <laughs> All right, that's enough yapping. Let's lock the f in. What's up, Professor Rowan? Hey, Alt. Before we um uh, uh, start, can you uh, sh you got it? You got press it. the balls on your screen. No. Please press my balls, Fine. please. Mm, oh, good heavens. I believe I just pokey busted. Okay. You already know who I'm picking. The key to the success of this video is that I must name my character after the most successful movie sequel of all time. Hey there, alternative. Oh, hey, Rowan. What's up? You're back. Yeah, sorry. I had to change my pants since they were all wet and soggy. Is that something that like happens frequently with you or? Yeah, every time I'm with your mom. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember this guy's name? I was actually trying to figure out what I wanted to name him. Isn't his name Barry? Is it? I thought his name Barry was... Barry my balls in your mouth, you fat f***ing... And just like every good Pokemon game, we begin our adventure inside of our bedroom. What is up, my slime? Let us go acquire some Poke the Mons. Hey. Sounds like a pretty solid plan to me. Once again, because I'm professional, I gotta adjust my settings and choose the appropriate frame. Now, I like this one because it's perfectly representative of the fact that I am always bricked up. One sec though, I gotta check in with the homie to see if he's ready. Yo, you almost ready to head out? Yes, my good friend. But first, let me say goodbye to daddy. Now, before we can get our first Pokemon, we have to get through this grass to get to the next town. However, that is a little troubling. Ugh, if only there was an old man who could just stroll along and give us some Pokemon. Oh, my dear Lord. I must assist these unaccompanied miners. Yes, bruv. I would like a poke of the mon. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hello, friends. Sorry for being late. I was quite eepy, so I took a sleepy. It is so good to meet you. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is this is the squad. Come on, I'm a chimchar guy. I will select the pip plop. Mmm, yes. Well, since there's now a witness, I gotta go. TT, YL, besties. <laughs> Apologies, my friends. Parentheses, giggles and smirks before walking off. Parentheses, eyes must depart as wills. Who did did he say that? Parentheses part out loud? Yeah. Um. He's a bit of a loon. Hold up. Banger alert. Turn that shit up. It appears I have bested thy in a duel of the Pokemans. Mom, I got my ass kicked. It's okay, sweetheart. Mommy is here for you. Wow, that really does fix all of my problems. Thanks, Mom. Yo, what's up, man? Tally ho, my good man. It is time we embark on our endeavors to catch the legendary Pokemon at the lake. Oh, no. Who's that? Cyrus is my name. Speed is my game. I will capture the Pokemons and do many, and I mean many, evils. He, he, he. Curious. Well, I gotta go visit the professor now. Thud, I must make haste. It's happy hour at Femboy Hooters. Hey, professor. Ah, uh, 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 welcome. Your mom doesn't know you're here, right? The first nickname of the run. Let's start things off strong. I'm so glad you're kind toward Pokemon. If you weren't, well, let's just say, parentheses, tilts head and smirks, parentheses, you wouldn't want to know. Okay, so the professor wants me to show you around town. Sick. Follow me. So where do I heal my Pokemon? I am glad you asked. This is the Pokemon Center. If you lose a trainer battle, you will return to the last one you visited. But you don't need to worry about that, right? Nope. Right? Nope, right? don't need to worry about it. Yeah, that's what I thought punk bitch. Ah. This is the ball store. They sell balls. Wow. This is now my new favorite store. Okay, that concludes our tour. 
Goodbye. Now that I have Pokeballs available, I can start to get my encounters. I catch a Wingle and I catch a Starly, respectively, though I still need to get the old rod from Jubilife. I also need to say goodbye to my mom. Oh, honey, you should take my Eevee with you on your journey. It may help you finish off some bad guys. Yeah, that's a good idea, Mom. I, I honestly, Eevee provides really good type coverage for a Nuzlocke, plus it's incredibly versatile with all of the evolution. Well, all we gotta do is do one more quick rival battle and we can keep moving forward. Not much of a rival battle as it takes about two seconds. Here I catch a Hoot Hoot and I press onwards to make my way towards Jubilife. Who the heck is that guy? Arg, my name is Looker and I am in search of some booty. Have you kids seen any pirate treasures? Can't say I've seen any pirate treasures, bro, but you know what? Here, I'll, I'll let you know if I see any, all right? A fine idea. There's nothing I crave more than booty, so please let me know if you find any. Farewell, travelers. While I need to talk to my rival in the trainer school to progress the story, I can instead talk to this NPC who will give me an egg. The egg doesn't take very long to hatch, and I end up with a Badoo. Pretty solid. I also finally get to talk to this fisherman who's going to give me the old rod, which will allow me to get several more encounters. First, next to this TM for water pulse, I go fishing here and I end up catching a Staryu. And just south of Sand Gem Down, we get a horsey. Can't forget to go fishing in the pond in Twin Leaf where I get a Magikarp. <laughs> <laughs> fishy. Next, I can head north of Jubilife City for two more encounters. My first encounter is just a little buggy boy, and alongside the Expert Belt and Rock Tomb in this cave, I encounter a Geodude. Undisputed goat of the early game. Now, in a few of these early game Pokemon centers, you will notice the reporters in the top corner. If you answer their questions and beat them in a battle, you can obtain three of a previous generation's starters. Hello, trainer. Would you like to complete a quiz for a chance to win some Pokemon? Hell yeah. Okay. Question one is is Pikachu an electric type Pokemon? Oh, fuck, I didn't study. Um, mm, can I, can I get a different question? No! <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, he's electric type. Hooray! Next question. Can you please recite for me the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Perfect! Okay, last question. Will you do the one block jump for the uncooked chicken or the one block vertical jump for the beef? Uh, what? Okay, let's battle, dumbass! If you're gonna call me a dumbass, at least come at me with something higher than a level five. My reward is a gift Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, but I'm only gonna choose one of them. We got Boobasaur. Sore, Char Booby, and of course, Kyle. It should go without saying that obviously the one that I am picking is Kyle. I can't forget the NPC in Jubilife that gives me the poke etch. Finally, I have unlocked the power of subliminal messaging. Oi, scrub, let us battle. This is the first, like, actual rival fight of the game, but it's not that difficult just because of the level cap and where we are in terms of the story. In this case, leading with a Starly is going to be no match for my Geodude. After missing a rock throw on the previous turn, I get growled by Starly, but even then it still just dies. So this fight's supposed to be easy if you just actually remember to bring a grass type to the battle, uh, but because I am stupid, I have to play the switching game. Eventually, though, I end up with my Hoot Hoot out who gets hit by a water pulse, and though he gets confused, he's still gonna land a hypnosis. All we gotta do is just bring in the buggy boy and finish him off with the poison fang. Thankfully, the Munchlax in the back has nothing that it can really do to touch my Geodude, hence why earlier I mentioned that this guy is the undisputed goat of the early game. Rapscallion! My reward for winning that trainer battle is another encounter. This time, I just get a Spearow. I'm running out of creative ideas, man. The encounters so far kind of suck. Okay, like, Wingle is trash, but also, why? I, I don't need two birds, man. Gay Bowser evolves, and we're finally in Orberg. And there are still so many encounters that we have to get. First up, the Don. But now we gotta get three more starters. Hey, you. I have some harder questions for you this time. Are you ready? Yeah, no, I, I've played this game before. I already know the answers. Perfect. Question one is, what is my favorite color? Fuck. Um, blue. Wrong. Damn it. Would you like to try again? No, but I have to. Correct. Wait, was that a question? Next question. Can you please calculate the Thevenin whoa, equivalent oh, voltage whoa, and oh, resistance <laughs> for this circuit? Wait, wait, pause, 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 pause. What's the Time matter, out. big boy? Can we just, like, not? Use that college degree of yours. Lock the fuck in. Look, pl please, just another question. I can't do this right now. I'm starting to see why women don't talk to you. Dame la lechuga, el pollo y mi amigo Juan. That's right, guys. I had Qdoba for dinner. Pero lo siento. Adios, Juan. Necesito la lechuga. 
Oh, hey, Steven. Steven here. Hello, I am Steven. Hello, Steven. Here's a free beldum. Thanks, Steven. Oinky doinky, my slime. Oinky doinky, my slime. You're playing Minecraft in a cave looking for diamonds. That's funny. I'm in the same cave looking for miners. Oh, I found one. Hey, kid, check this out. Kablamo. That's what I'm going to do to your balls once I beat you in a battle. Rourke is nice enough to give us an evolution stone before we go do the gym battle. And, you know, I could do a typical Umbreon or, you know, I could save the stone for later. Uh, I want to be based, so I'm going to go with the ice stone. I think I'm the first person ever when faced with that choice to pick Glaceon over anything else. But we'll talk about that more later. It's gym time. Rourke's gym requires a lot of strategy and planning to get through his trainers. Now, luckily for me, I'm actually good at this game unlike you guys so I handled this pretty easily uh, greetings challenger here to get your balls exploded I see we'll see about that you scum your balls will be mine oh yeah come and take them yeah, so sorry guys, I got a little excited and I went for a bulldoze first turn. My mistake. Let me just... Okay, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, so that is what I meant by early game carry. Splendid. Yo, what's up, penis? What is good, my slime? Just got my gym badge. Uh, I'm gonna head north of Jubilife up to Floroma Town. What about you? I'm heading to Eterna City, as that is where my weed dealer resides. Like I said, let's head back to Jubilife. Arg, hath thou found any booty? Not yet, but I heard Floroma Town has some fine-ass women up there. Arg. That is arg, not the best arg. News for my arg ears. I will continue my search elsewhere. Arg! <laughs> I kind of forgot that there's a bunch of other apps other than the one that allows me to ask for your credit card information. Nice. Wait a sec, the memories are flowing back. Give me, give me just one minute. Okay, now we can continue. Hold right there, old man. You are weak and I am strong, though admittedly not as strong as Saturo Gojo, but still, I will beat your cheeks. Hey all, can you beat this guy's ass for me? Yeah, let me take care of this. Purple. Good job, Pookie Bear. Don't call me that. Okay, 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 sorry. I thought, uh, never mind. I am also part of this conversation. When is your 18th birthday again? Bro, I am 10. Close enough. TTYL, bestie. Uh, who are you? July 17th, 2027. Count your days. W was that a threat? I don't know about you guys, but I am not looking forward to July 17th. But we made it to Floroma Town. Oh, fuck. Hello, quiz woman. I don't want to talk to you. Are you allowed to do that? Isn't it your job to hand out these Pokemon? Uh, you bastard. Okay. Question one. Solve this math problem and please show your work. Okay, a double integral is easy. Um, okay. Uh, integrate with respect to y so we can factor out the x. And so now we just have to integrate uh, 1 over y squared through the boundaries of 6 to 4. Okay. Once you integrate y, it turns into uh, negative 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4. And you multiply the sum of those two fractions times the integration of x with the respect of the boundaries of 2 to 1. Okay. So we integrate x. Uh, the integral of just x is going to be x squared over 2. Minus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4 is going to simplify down to 1 over 12. And substituting in the boundary values for the integration of x is going to come down to 2 minus 1 over 2. Simplify that down to 3 over 24, but your final answer is 1 over 8. Holy shit, lol, you fucking nerd! What do you want from me? I think you guys already know which uh, Johto starter I'm picking. You can't come in. Go away. I will admit, when I was 12 years old, uh, it took me a while to figure out that I had to come back here to progress the story. Just one quick and easy grunt battle later, and now I can get into Valley Wind Works. Hello there! If you have the money, I will provide thee some honey! Okay, thank you, bye-bye! Because honey trees are instantaneous in this ROM, I decided that for my next few encounters, I'm just gonna hit the honey trees, because who knows, maybe later down the road, it might come in handy. Behind Floroma Town, we get the Execute. Heading up Route 205, we get a Burmy. And at the Valley Wind Works, we get a Caterpie. Absolutely. 
absolutely fantastic encounters. Let's commit a crime and break into this house. Okay, this 10-year-old is incredibly threatening. I must fall back. Hey, buddy, can you just... Can you just look the other way for a sec? Just one sec. Real quick. Okay, thanks. I will foil your evil plans. I don't care that you're 10 years old or that you are a girl. Equal rights means equal fights, bitch, so come catch these hands. All right, everyone knows this fight. We got to figure out a way to deal with this Perugly. That's coming later in the fight, because first we got to send out our Geodude to take care of the Zubat. Zubat outspeeds and goes for a Toxic, but I just as easily take him out with a Rock Tomb. Anticipating a Gyro Ball, I swap over to Gyarados, but instead he just tanks an extra sensory. Two bites and a flinch is enough to take out the Bronzor. Gay Bowser is gonna come in and tank this fake out, but it does quite a bit. A facade from Perugly is going to hurt, but I have Monkey here just to hit them with a low kick. Perugly heals back up with a Citrus Berry, but Gyarados is gonna come in, hit the Perugly with an Intimidate, and eat the facade. A back and forth ensues with Perugly's facades and Gyarados's bites. However, Gyarados does come out on top. Last is this damn Yanma, so I swap into Geodude to tank the Air Cutter. Even though I resist it, my special defense is trash. This Yanma does have speed boost though, so I have to pray that my Geodude does not die here. <sighs> okay, it was gonna happen eventually. At least my Glaceon gets to shine. Yum. I really got my ass beat by a literal child. Let's skedaddle. As much as I would like to rejoice in reuniting this scientist with his daughter, um, I have something else I have to do. Uh, it appears you have beaten me to this house. Did you find any booty? Sorry, man, I couldn't find any, but you're more than welcome to go inside and check for yourself. Don't mind if I do. There be no booty in this house. Arg, arg, arg. I'm literally crying and pissing and shitting myself, bro. I'm gonna miss this Geo dude. Oh yeah, I just never even mentioned at the start of the video that whenever I lose a mon, uh, something is gonna happen. So yeah, about my Geodude dying. Your Geodude's sacrifice was the ultimate act of selflessness in a twist of fate that you couldn't have controlled, no matter how prepared you thought you were. <laughs> <clears throat> Why? Why are you doing this? Uh, oh, good heavens, I'm feeling quite ill. You can't even begin to comprehend how powerful the walnuts are. They do grant my every wish, and, you know, maybe, maybe I do enjoy making people fall ill, we should say. Don't tell me that you Perhaps I should give you a demonstration. Walnuts, send this man into cardiac arrest. Ah, oof, oof, ow, my heart. You fiend! <laughs> Walnuts, give this man neck pain. Ah, oof. Ooh, man, my neck hurts. I don't understand. H how how can you just do this to these people? You are responsible for this. Nuh uh. You are literally killing that man. No, I'm not. He just had a heart attack. I think the walnuts are corrupting your mind. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. Well, you need to fix this now. Okay. I cast cardiac arrest. Ah! What are you doing? I I'm, I'm fixing it. That doesn't fix anything. I don't understand. He's literally like not in pain anymore. That's because you killed him. Uh uh. His heart killed him, not me. I don't see how you could possibly justify using this power to make people ill. Oh yeah? Walnuts, take her out. Oh my God, you killed the Queen of England. Boom. Ah. Hey, it's fucking me, Geo dude, and I'm here to punish you. But aren't you dead? It don't matter, I'm here to punish you. But like, you can't touch me, right? It don't matter. I'm just here to tell you that I'm disappointed in you. Aw. Fuck you. Hey. I dare that coward to show his face once more. I think you can heal in this house before the forest, right? What's up, kid? Oh, are you his mother? Damn, you're so upfront about it. Yeah, let's sleep together. Oh yeah, I'm feeling refreshed. <laughs> this kid just watched me fuck his mom. <laughs> a canon event for a future cuck. Wait, there's no cut trees. Can I just like, ah, uh, Man. Onwards. Hello, stranger. Hey, who are you? I am the Green Power Ranger, and I would like to battle you. It feels very inauthentic for me to pretend that this fight was, like, even difficult, and I don't want to hype it up, so... What is more difficult, however, is having Cheryl on my team. Strategically speaking, it would be best for me to uh, finish Eterna Forest before I get my encounter, but I'm not a bitch. At least this way I get two encounters instead of one. <laughs> Time for the secret second boss fight, and I have to kill Cheryl's Pokemon all over again. Baneri, hang in there! I'll save you! 
Oh my god, this is huge. Yo, get this stupid ass grape off my screen. Get out of here. Okay, shit, I can't do anything about this. Uh, Baneri, please just go for an endure. You've been enduring this entire fight, just do it again. Baneri, no, no! Cheryl, have mercy, no! I mean, at the end of the day, at least I get a mischievous. I mean, that's not like the worst thing. Oh, it's also fairy type too, so. There is only one mandatory double battle that I have to do in a turn of forest, but even then, I can just do two single battles if I really wanted to. Veneri dying really took me out of the mood of battling, so I'm just gonna see what are the apps that I have in here. What is this? Oh my god, I have a bomb! What is this app? Uh, oh, I guess my Glaceon and Grovile do not want to smooch. Gyarados, will you smooch them? <gasps> they almost want to kiss. Kiss. Kiss, 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 kiss. Whoa! Okay. Come on, Cheryl, let's go to the spooky house. Whoa, it sounds like there's a Pokemon in there. Oh, oh, it it does it does sound pretty scary. What if we get tricked into eating invisible food? Oh no! Alright, leave. I wanna go in the house. <laughs> the house isn't really spooky enough for me, so I'm just gonna draw a really spooky guy. Wait, hold up. I gotta make him a distinguished gentleman now. Oh my god, dude. My timbers are shivering. Oh, thank god. I was getting quite eepy. Me, 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 me. Ah, punished for my crimes. Ooh, a cool duskull. This guy definitely likes to eat the booty. I'm gonna come back later, though, and get my Rattam. A quick finesse of a water stone, and we finally make it to Eterna. Nice. Thud! Yo, what's up, penis? Hello, chap. Follow me. I want to show you a statue. Oh, no! It's the bad guy! Hey, kids. Hi. Did you know? Did you know that uh, this statues is not statues, but actually is a Pokemon? No. This. This is because Pokemon statue is not Pokemon. Really? But is stone and not a Pokemon. Whoa. But is also a statue. What? Stone Pokemon statue is not Pokemon, but is also stone and a statue. Wow. Goodbye, children. Um, what the Sigma? After that brief encounter, I discussed with Penis the strategies that I should take into account while doing Pokemon battles. As long as I hit all of my attacks and my opponent doesn't hit any of theirs, I should win. I'm gonna need to find this guy's dealer because whatever he's smoking, I definitely need some of it. <laughs> oh, thank you! Behind the Galactic HQ, you can find the TM for Thief, which is really good in this game because I can just start stealing my opponent's items. Nice. And next door to the Pokemon Center, we can get some fossils. The woman scientist will give me one of every fossil, and the old man is going to give me the Explorer Kit. Back to the spooky house. Oh, scary painting! Whoa! A Gengar! I, I hope I can catch- Never mind, this guy would rather kill himself than be on my team. I'm gonna do it, guys. I'm gonna thump the TV. I just gotta remind you guys once again that catching Pokemon is incredibly easy. I mean, all you gotta do is just ask them politely and they'll stay in the ball. <clears throat> Please stay in the ball. Thank you, my kind sir. He's back. My fishing encounter for Eterna City is a Poliwag, which is incredibly fortunate because I have a Waterstone, which means Big Fisty is living out their dreams. My next encounter is the hit children's game Fortnite. If you're gonna mess with me, you're going night night. And we head into Mount Coronet, but we have a to-do list. Use a Repel, Moonstone, Rock Polish. This part of Mount Coronet is actually not blocked off, so you can get Dragon Claw. It's not useful, but you can get it. We go down a floor and now I can get my encounter. I can't believe they actually gave my low tech fairy typing in this game. Prism scale, light clay, and some never melting ice. Ah, weather. I'm quite pleased to announce the encounter is a sneasel. Got the club going up. Now, for as far as I have to go on this route, there's only one mandatory trainer that I have to fight, but unfortunately for them, my Glaceon has just now learned a special ice move. So, you know me, I love houses. Hey, Gardenia. Oinky doinky fellow trainer. Yo, aren't you Penis's dealer? He said that he would tell you to hold some stuff for me. I will meet you at the gym. If you can beat me, then I will give you half off the price of an ounce. Deal. 
<laughs> Hell yeah. Boo. Ah. I must make haste. <laughs> yeah, so one thing I realized while I was editing the last episode is that I never actually got an encounter in Oraburg Gate. Does it really matter though? Because I end up with a diglet. On a Tuesday. It's mighty convenient that I had to come back to Oraburg to do this because now I can finally head to the museum and revive a Pokemon. I'm only going to revive one Pokemon and I chose Aerodactyl. Though I might revive more in the future if Future Alt decides decides to fuck something up. Aerodactyl's cry kind of sounds like Coming back to Eterna City, if I show this scientist my Aerodactyl, she gives me the TM for Rock Slide. But now it's time to do some prepping so I can take on the gym. Oh man, I hope the trainers in here aren't too difficult. Whenever you defeat a trainer in this gym, the clock will change hands to a different time. Whoa! Whoa! We're almost there! Oh my god! Oh! The level cap for this gym is level 26, but it's kind of hard to maintain XP if there's not a strict enforced level cap, so I'm just treating level 26 as the level that my guys have to be when I enter the gym. So my Monferno is going to be level 28 because he beat the shit out of everybody. Did you enjoy riding on my big clock? Yeah, that shit got my legs shaking. Good! Now if you would excuse me, I must smoke some grass and eat. Yo, ass. Hey, wait, look behind you. I'm not stupid. I'm not falling for that one. Shit. Well, I tried. Blossom is no match for an Aurora Beam but the Berloom coming out next can easily take me out with a Mach Punch. I could just swap over to Ariados, who tanks the Mach Punch lickety split. Because Ariados has Insomnia, I can't be put to sleep with Spore, and I really don't have to worry about any of the Berlooms attacking moves other than Thunder Punch. Doesn't really matter though, because I'm just gonna take all of my health back with a Leech Life. But the Sword Dances are gonna help because the Roserade will outspeed and kill my Ariados. Swap to Metang, tank the extra sensory, Swap over to Butterfree, tank the Magical Leaf, and now I gotta tank one Sludge so I can get off a String Shot. Perfect. Get nutted on. Swap back to Metang, tank a Dazzling Gleam, and just don't die to the Magical Leaf. Jesus. Huge Zen Headbutt, though. It's not gonna kill, but that's why we lowered Roserade's speed. Glaceon, I command you to not die. It wasn't even a crit. Okay, to be fair, I thought that Glaceon would have like an actual special defense stat, but no. Fuck you. Tangela is going to throw out a random move onto my Glaceon, so I swap into Monferno to tank it. Tangela can live a flame wheel from Gay Bowser, but is going to whiff the stun sport. That's not going to save you, asshole. Grodel comes in, so I got to send out the flying boy. I love having Thief because now I permanently have a Leftovers. Aerodactyl did his job, so Aerodos is just gonna come in and clean up. Yoink. Cherim can't really do anything, but it has a Focus Sash, so all I gotta do is Leech Life and then finish it off with a Shadow Sneak. Alright, let me get an ounce of that top shelf. Alright, bet. Neat. Hey kid, I wasn't gonna beat your ass, but I see you have the second gym badge, so I guess I'll work your shit. Oh yeah? Take this! Uh, Damn, this kid's got hands. Ugh, I'll teach you a lesson, grunt. Uh, hello my friend, it's me. I am currently undercover doing some research. Have you found anything out that might aid us in the battle against evil? These Team Galactic baddies are outstanding, and I must say that their booties are out of this world. Okay, I just gotta beat up some scrubs and make my way to the top floor. I am here to save the day. A Golbat on the lead? There's only one man for the job. Ah! Rock Slide is enough to take him out. No need to risk Aerodactyl. Aerodos can take care of this Tangula. Just gonna do a little dancey dance and call it a day. Hey! It's funny because the Sableye has a citrus berry, but I'm just gonna thief and take it and eat it right in his face. Yummy. I'll just finish you off with a leech life. Perish. Ah, shit. No, not a night slash. Ow, ooh, ooh, ow. Get the fuck out of my face. 
Team Galactic has fled, but they left behind a Porygon. I will come back for you. Oh, hey again, Cynthia. Mmm, egg. I'll have to come back for this egg. Not only do I need to remember to go get the Porygon, but it's time that I introduce my Rattom to some appliances. Just interact with this random ass piece of the wall, and boom, Secret Home Depot. Based off of how my box is currently looking, I think that going with the washing machine is going to be my best bet. Oh, hey. Hey, Professor. Did you put your Rotom in one of these appliances? Yeah, I went with the washing machine. I thought it'd be good type coverage for me. Nice, nice, nice. So, like, um, what if instead of a washing machine, it was your mom? Okay. And instead of Rotom going in... Uh-huh. It was my PNR. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, my bad. Don't worry, I made sure to pick up all of the items from the building. And of course, that means my boy Perk 30. Oh, and the Togepi from Cynthia. I gotta name him though? Um, you know what? He do kind of be looking like a Bartubius. By heading back into Eterna Forest, I can head over to the Mossy Rock and grab a Leaf Stone. Now, I can evolve my eggs. It is time to go down the cycling road. This is how a pro avoids all the trainers. <laughs> Get juked. Oh, you're know where I'm heading, but first I'm gonna get an encounter. Ah, he's returned. Yo, what up, man? And now we go in the super secret under the bridge cave. You know, contrary to popular belief, this is actually my Nuzlocke and I make the rules. So welcome Zubat to the team. But there is something cool at the very end. There's no more TM for earthquake here, but instead we get a static Gabite encounter. Yeah, this is pretty epic. Uh-oh. I regret to inform you, the viewer, that we did not catch the Gabite. I should really go get some Pokeballs. Stores are only selling Pokeballs and the special ones are way overpriced? What the hell, man? Now I gotta go fight Mira. Hold up, guys. I need to cope for this fight real quick. I'm just gonna put something on screen. Uh, okay, there we go. Somehow an Iron Head from uh, Matang is not enough to take out the Togetic, so Matang is punished with Confusion. Don't care, Confusion is a myth we always hit through. I bring an Ariados to tank whatever the Haunter throws at me. I just yoink his shit and put him in the ground. I mean, hey, free spell tag. Kadabra's gonna come in next, so I swap over to Matang. I can tank the Psybeam, and I can tank the Grass Knot before hitting him with an Iron Head. All these NPCs are fucking cowards using potions. I had gone for a Bullet Punch this turn. I should have just gone for an Iron Head. I hit the Kadabra with a second Bullet Punch, and it's not enough to take him out. So now I just gotta lift the Grass Knot. <laughs> okay, get out of my lobby. I swapped to Mischievous, but the Porygon whiffs his charge beam. I'm not even gonna pretend like I know what I was doing or thinking at two, three in the morning playing this game, but yeah, uh, Executor comes in and I guess I just kind of forgot about the existence of Signal Beam. Um, I just hope that nobody watching has an attachment to Executor, but I doubt it. This Pokemon is fucking stupid. I have nobody to blame except for myself. After I finish escorting Mira's dumbass through this cave where we aren't required to fight any trainers, I receive the TM for Dazzling Gleam. Yeah! Oh, <gasps> Shiny claws, baby. <laughs> oh, the Magmi just kind of fainted? It must be a glitch. Onwards to the next city. Stop right there, friendo. Parentheses walk slowly with my fists clenched with rage, parentheses. Hey, man, do you need something or... I need to discipline you, kitten. What? In a battle. Oh. You know the deal. Fake out, flamethrower. He's dead. Oh, whatever. I would like to imagine that there's only genuinely one person in the world that likes Licky Licky, and I would put money on the facts that they work at Game Freak. Sorry, got off topic. Owie. Just performing my due diligence and stealing yet another leftovers. Owie. But now it's a guaranteed win because the Licky Licky can't touch my Miss Magius, so I can just kind of sit here and kill him slowly no matter how long it takes. I just kind of assume that I can get a Shadow Ball off and tank at least one hit from the Grand Bowl. Yup, Metang comes in, tanks the Thunderfang, and then we beat his ass. Oh, crap. <laughs> Never punished. Calculated. It doesn't even matter that there's a Grotal in the back because we just bring in the Aeridos to tank whatever he throws at me, and then he just goes down to some Leech Lives. 
<laughs> yep. Parentheses, frowns, and wallows in self-pity parentheses. I mean, all right. Mountain. Oh, hello, evil man. Out of my way. It's happy hour at Femboy Hooters. And now we're on to Route 208, and I will say that this is probably one of my more favorite routes. And it's not just because I get the TM for Swords Dance. There's also a sketchy guy in the corner that gives you the odd keystone. I just make sure to grab the berries up top, and then I get my encounter. You know, a, a barrel's pretty good if it has simple, but uh, this one ended up having unaware. Honestly, I think you deserve your fate. I'm so glad everybody forgot about the fact that my Exeggy or died. <laughs> Psych. Damn it. I'm just stopping by to tell you that one, you're a bitch. Hey. Two, before you can do the next gym, you must win a beauty contest. Do I have to? Uh, okay. Yeah, well, he said. Get the fuck out of here. Well, I guess we press onwards. Oh, hi there. Oh, hey, you kind of look like someone who enjoys bugs. Do you like bugs? No. The irony of this fight is that it's supposed to be incredibly difficult, but, you know, I'm just gonna wipe your team of bugs with my bug. The Dust Ox does not have a single move that can hurt me other than Bug Buzz, but that isn't gonna do a lot, so I'm just gonna get some free swords dances. Oh, and another free leftovers. And now that Aaron is in full panic mode, now we get to have some fun. Aaron swaps out his 1 HP Dust Ox into a Beautifly, but, dude, I'm I'm at plus six and I have a priority move. You're not gonna win. Venomoth, whoosh. Dust Ox, whoosh. Scizor, whoosh. Drapion, boink. So you're an elite four member? Yeah, I think I'm just a diversity hire. I love Heart Home, bro. They got such a good little theme song here. Do, 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 my only hope going forward is that it doesn't take me multiple attempts to win a beauty contest because God, we all know how that went last time. You are not fucking for real right now. Oh. <laughs> so I'm confident that this won't be an issue. Growing up, I was always told that life is a race, but that never stopped me. That never held me back because I always knew that I was born to race. Everybody always tells me how fast and how talented I am at driving, but <laughs> no, sweetheart, I'm just racist. Even though I spent a lot of time thinking about who I want to bring to the next gym battle, uh, there's something that I have to take care of. Oh, hello, my sweet child. Mom, why are you here? I heard that you suck shit at Nuzlocke's. Hey! So I came to cheer you on at the contest hall. It's kind of a shame that you came all the way down here just because this isn't going to take me very long. Like, I already know that I'm the undisputed goat of these contests. Sure, whatever you say, dumbass. Hey, what the fuck are you looking at? Ho, ho, ho. Oui, oui, baguette. Rendez-vous. Merci beaucoup. In a Pokemon battle, I shall beat you. 360 no scope. Au revoir, dipshit. French people, am I right? <laughs> Yo, get out of my way. All right, sign me up for a super contest. Hell yeah. Uh, probably not gonna be able to do master, eh? Oh shit, there's a bunch of choices. Normal rank is fine. Uh, I guess I'll have to settle with that for today, but cool, beauty, cute, smart, or tough contest. Um, I'm gonna go with cool. And we're gonna bring the coolest guy that I know. All right, let's do the shit. Make me pretty. Mmm! Damn, I look good. Hello, all my adoring fans. I'm so glad you came out to see me. Hey guys, welcome to the cool contest. Sarah, boo, boo. Hey, nobody came here to see Tiffany. Come on, bro. This is a cool contest. You think a bitch named Heather is cool? Oh, and it's me. Yeah, woo, yeah. I used an action replay code to give myself all of the accessories because why not? You know, like, oh no. All right, I got 60 seconds. What's the theme? The natural? What does that mean? Ah, shit. Hold on, guys. Let me just, like, lock in real quick. Look, this contest is all about presentation. I couldn't ruin the surprise, right? You guys got to get the same reaction as the audience. Sarah pulling up with baddie. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, and it gets three hearts. Okay. Tiffany coming in with flick. Uh, you know, that one's kind of valid. All right, who's Heather coming in? He Heather's coming in with Pit. That's dog shit. And we saved the best for last, baby. Check him out. Check out my boy. 
Damn, he is flexing on all of you broke ass bitches in the audience. Guys, it's time to dance. Hooray! That was fun. Now it's time to impress the judges. I do love me some Pokemon. Ah, uh, yes, Pokemon time. I'm so excited to be a judge. All right, Cherim, what could you possibly have that's cool? Magical leaf? That was shit. Wow, that was so cool. Okay. Yippee, my turn. Dude, don't get worked up over seeing a Shanks use a spark, dude. That's not cool. It's like the least cool thing I've ever seen. Wowie, so cool. I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, ooh, uh, my voltage is going up. You yucky bat. That's exactly my reaction when I see the stupid ass Zubat use a wing attack. Oh, someone already put, oh my God, you're so bad. Oh my goodness, hunting my voltage. What the fuck is happening? All right, let me show him how a real bat does a wing attack. Boom. That move was so epic and cool. Wow. You're goddamn right it was. Ending the round with a solid plus three. All right, that's a good first round. We'll take that. Zubat, there is nothing you could possibly do to impress anybody in this room. Wow, I am so impressed! Yippee! Okay, apparently, except for that. You know, the game, I think the game has it wrong. It classifies U-turn as a cute move, but I think that's pretty cool. Plus three for that? Hell yeah. Wow, that was awesome. Yeah? I fucking hated it. Ah, don't embarrass yourself, Shinx. Oh boy, show me what you got. Mid. <laughs> How do you get zero hearts? Oh my God, no way you chose to go for the same judge. You are throwing. <laughs> Flick and Pit both threw hard. I just gotta make sure I beat Batty and I, I think I'm good, right? All right, Flick, we're getting desperate here. You gotta do something cool. Oh, okay, we're just gonna use Spark again. All right. Oh no, three points, oh. Holy crap, you are so cool. Here's another three Wh points what? because I'm the judge Wh and I can do what I want. What the fuck? All right, Cherum, now's your time to mount your comeback. <laughs> All right, check this shit out. Wapow. That was pretty sick, bro. Thank you. Oh my God, Batty, don't embarrass yourself. I still don't even know what Flick did to get so many hearts, but uh, not not bad. Only one more round to go, so. Cherim, you need to step it up this round if you want to have a chance. Okay, the last time you used Solar Beam, it didn't really do much for you, so. Yep, that <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. I'm tired of waiting for my turn. Watch me go. Hell yeah. All right, so do I win? Finally, I can go get the next gym badge. Just give me the dub. Visual competition? Oh, I killed that shit. Excuse me, what the fuck? There is no way that I got zero points on the first part, and I murdered them in the dance competition. And what about the last part? Okay, so I, I would have won. Okay, sick. Okay, so today I learned that Gligar is not cool. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to lock in and try again, which don't get me wrong, I would love to do, but I went back and looked at my footage for the next contest that I did and all of the audio is gone for some reason. So instead, I will just give you a brief rundown. Not only did I go absolutely crazy dressing up my Glaceon, but believe it or not, I actually did get hearts this time. After my Glaceon finished up busting a fat move all over for these idiots. We got straight to business showing these judges what's good. I don't want to hear it. All I need is for you guys to put some respect on Boner Garage's name. At least I'm finally done with that shit. Hey. Should should I even ask why you're here? Can I interview you real quick? Fine. What do you want? Now that you have won a contest, other than the touch of a woman, can you tell me what you are feeling? I regret talking to you. Oh, it's one of these. How am I feeling about that contest? Wait, why is Raffle a suggestion? I'm, I'm, I won the contest. I'm literally rolling on the floor, laughing and crying and pissing and shitting myself. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I'm feeling quite depressed. Uh, that's so cool. Thanks. I would be depressed too if I were you. All right. At this point, I'm just kind of going around the city to see if there's anything that I've missed or any items that I can take advantage of before the gym fight. 
Um, how did you get here so fast? I'm the one asking questions, so shut the fuck up. I'm sorry. Good. Now tell me, how do you feel about your Glaceon? Uh, I feel, um... Oh, I'm definitely feeling like... <laughs> For real. Maybe more girls would talk to you if you stopped trying to fuck animals. Shit, maybe you're right. Oh well, their loss. <gasps> oh, this. This is horrible news. <sighs> okay, uh, something really fucked up with my Streamlabs, and I'm only now realizing that I have like a couple days worth of footage where all of the audio is just missing, but. You know what? I think it's easier if I just kind of show it to you and explain it to you guys. Without going into too much detail, uh, I lose two Mons on the Fantina fight. I lose my Porygon 2 and I lose my Milotic. Even though I'm able to win and claim my gym badge, I still need to be punished. So here's what I had decided on doing. Because I lost two Mons in that fight, I decided that the appropriate punishment would be that I have to go uh, claim victory in the Team Galactic event happening over at the mansion but I have to do it with a party of four rather than a party of six. And like, you know, this part isn't too difficult, uh, but the real challenge comes with the boss fight because this is a tag battle, which means I don't get to do two of my own mons. Rather, I have to rely on the shitty AI of my partner. Because the AI is so weird and it's different from the previous games that have played like Run and Bun, uh, an example being these mons having fake out but choosing not to go for it on turn one. I, I don't know. Okay, I lost this fight, as heartbreaking as it is. So maybe this is a sign for me to lock the fuck in on this next playthrough. So that is exactly what I did. Other than having to delete my playthrough uh, because it took so long for me to figure out what the hell was going wrong with my Streamlabs, I just decided to uh, tweak my recording setup a little bit. So the screen's gonna look a little different. I think it's appropriate to do just a little montage until I get back up to the point where I was in the story, just so we don't have to watch all of the same events over again. So let's do just that. Oh, hey, you're back. Yeah, sorry, Rowan, I'm kind of in a hurry. That's fine, just touch my balls real quick. Obviously, I pick the monkey again, but I'm going to do a few things different this run. There are a few early game gift Pokemon, the first of which comes from this briefcase in Rowan's lab, where you can get a Turtwig and a Piplup, or whichever of the other two starters you didn't pick. I would say that we get off to a pretty good start on this playthrough. There are a lot of encounters to get early on in this game, so let me just introduce you to everyone. We got Gerald, Rupert, Miss Fists. We got Mommy, Martha, Balls, <laughs> Herbert. I got Boner. Ah, shit. I gotta go get the starters. Oh, you're back. Ugh. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it either. Can we just get this over with? Fine. Question one. Are you a little bitch? Uh, no. Wrong. Try again. Are you okay? No. <laughs> okay, you seem to be struggling. I'm just gonna take the starters. Um, wish you the best. <laughs> Gerald, Cockathee, Iron Hands, and Rhyhorny. Given that I named my Eevee Sonichu, it's only appropriate that I get a Jolteon. Oh, and we also get... Hmm. <gasps> yeah, and Rourke... Um, yeah, that went about exactly how you would expect it to. Thud! Arr. Hey, Looker. The booty is not satisfying me anymore. I need coochie. Moisture. I'm the guy. But I already got a Magnemite in black and white, too, and he was the guy. The real guy. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm happy to see a Cherubi because I don't actually get to keep the Cherubi. Instead, I can trade it for a Skaroopi. And don't worry, because this go around on the Mars fight, I did not lose any Mons. Forest time! After only pressing about four buttons with my Jolteon, it is time to redeem my Eterna Forest encounter. And never in my life would I expect to be faced with such a decision. I must be incredibly careful. Uh-oh. <laughs> Turn that sound off. I don't care which one of those two that I get. I just need to guarantee that Cheryl dies. Holy shit, the redemption. The Baneri's actually going for the Endure this time. Cheryl, I already know all of your tricks. Okay, except for that one. Yo, Shumish, you just gonna take that? Yeah, you're just gonna let him do that to you? Okay, that's two. That's three. Shumish, how badly do you want it? How four? How badly do you want it? Oh, he hits the fifth! Oh, absolute cinema! 
Oh my god. Stupid ass grape. We did it, guys. We did it. We got the encounter. Yippee! Our goat has made a triumphant return. So, I mean, that's kind of epic. Maybe this time I can catch the Gengar. Might be a little difficult, though. He's got a pretty low catch rate. Okay. <laughs> Noob. Oh, yeah. And don't worry. Of course we catch Home Depot. Thud! What's up? Statue. Okay. Oh, no. Evil guy. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, I am evil guy. The pond in Eterna City has three encounters, a Magikarp, a Poliwag, both of which I already have. So I get the third one, which is a Dratini. Something, something penis joke. Everything in Mount Coronet so far is the same. And yes, that does include beef ass. Instead of a Sneasel though, this time I get a snow run and I get a Dawnstone soon. I get my Route 211 encounter on the east side rather than the west side this time. And we get baby. One sec, just gotta go wipe the second gym. And it really wasn't that bad because once I take out Roserade, everything else is easy because in this generation you can use Spore on grass type mons, which is very good. Five Nights at Freddy. After manhandling probably the easiest galactic boss of the playthrough, I can now move on down the cycling road. But I do need to make sure I change my Rotom's form and get the Porygon. I want to try the fan version of Rotom. It's basically just Zapdos and it doesn't have Levitate, so it's not useless. Hey, Alt. Hey, Professor. It's getting close to Christmas. Uh-huh. So I have decided that this year I would like to give the gift of my Pinar to your mother. No. Rats, my plans have yet again been foiled. <laughs> we do a little biking. My encounter up to Wayward Cave is just a little stinky. But this time, I actually brought Pokeballs. Remember, guys, you just gotta ask politely. Obama! And don't worry, guys. This time for the mirror fight, I'm sober. I know, I know, I'm so responsible. I still go get an Aerodactyl just so I can get the TM for Rock Slide, but I'm not gonna use it. Instead, I got a Zamazenta. Parentheses, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Parentheses. Wow, thanks, I hated that. Because I now have the power of God on my team, this battle was a lot easier. Oh, hey, Cyrus. <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> the evil Pokemon man. <laughs> I encounter a very jiggly man just before I have to beat the bug guy. Now, this is typically a fight that I would commentate over, but you know, when you have a Bastiodon and you can just set up stealth rocks, um, believe it or not, putting a Pecha Berry on my Bibarel so it can't get hit with Toxic. Um, yeah, so now we unleash the plus six stab Aqua Jet. I love Heart Home City. Ah! Now I just gotta talk to this strange French purple lady and we can progress. Gym time. I'm so glad that in this version, I just have to look for shapes in the dark. Uh, Cause honestly, <sighs> I don't know if I could handle the math. The math is much scarier. Ah, I shall add you to my trick shot montage. Noob. Oh yeah? Je suis le petit fromage, bitch. You should, Escargot, fuck yourself. <laughs> Looks like my third grade French classes are gonna come in handy. So is a discharge. Yeah, he's not living that. That's it. I'm baby. Just gotta steal this guy's leftovers real quick. Oh no, I'm burned. If only I had guts. Bonk. This fight isn't gonna be clean. I need you to lock in and live the sludge bomb. Oh, hell yeah. That's no longer baby. That's man. Fuck him up, Paul. I know you can eat a couple of dark pulses or shadow balls, so I decided to get a little greedy and go for some howls because I have quick feet and I know the spirit tomb's going to want to burn me. I didn't know if quick feet made it, so I didn't lose my attack from getting burned. Uh, Your honor, I... I played oopsie daisy. Safe to say, yeah, now we gotta switch. All right, we getting stinky with it. Take this. Hey, stop that. I feel like I might as well steal your zoom lens while I'm at it. Okay, this is why no one likes French people. All right, whatever, that took longer than it should have. Of all the members that I have on my team, I think that Skunk Tank is the most expendable. So I am sorry, but uh, bye bye. 
Middle of the fight, Jolteon leveled up and learned Thunderbolt, and with a good special defense stat, I can pretty confidently 1v1 this Miss Magius. Snagging that life orb earlier from Mira's Kadabra comes in clutch. Uh, even though if I got a little unlucky here, things could have gone south and, you know, I would have lost my Jolteon, but that's not the case. And Miss Maggie's is just barely within range to kill. Oh no, a Banette. Let me just... Yeah, I lost him on that fight, but let's be real. I think I've been punished enough with uh, having to... You know, re-record hours of footage and make a new file. Blah, 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 blah. We win. Yippee! Okay, it's time to finally progress to the Pokemon Mansion. Can, can, you, go, can you get away from me? No. I do have to go fight my rival real quick, though. Hey, I've come to battle you. Oh, I guess he doesn't see me. Hey, I've come to battle you. Hey, I've come to battle you. Hey, I've come to battle you. Hey! Hello, chap! Oh, okay. Hey, I saw that you legally changed your name to Goober. Did you just not like being called Penis, or...? No, Penis is just my last name. My full legal name is Gooba Barry Penis. <laughs> wow, learn something new every day, huh? This rival fight isn't that bad yet. He only has four Mons. He's gonna lead with a Staravia, but I just lead with my Jolteon, and we all know how this is gonna end. Uh, you're just gonna get one shot by a Thunderbolt. Snorlax really can't do anything, so I just swap in Golem, but I'm gonna get hit with a Yawn. Not to worry, because all he can really do is hit me with Body Slams and Rock Slides, so I'm not gonna take much damage. Even after I wake up, I get hit with a Body Slam that paralyzes me, but like I said, the Snorlax can't even really hurt me, so it's just gonna take a few more turns of trying to hit through the Paralysis to finish him off. Eventually, though, I do hit through the Paralysis and I finish him off with an Earthquake. Heracross wants to brick break my golem, so I'm just gonna swap in the monkey, tank that, we can't die to any crits or anything, and we can just finish him with a fake out flamethrower. As much as I wanted Mr. Weed to finish off the stupid ass Primplup, uh, Scald is going to burn us. Just put the Primplup into a marijuana induced coma and swap back over to the Jolteon. Get out of my lobby! Wah! It doesn't take very long before we're told that we have to go down to the Pokemon Mansion to stop the bull cut bad guys. But I do want to get my encounter here first. And I mean, all right. What's really convenient though, is that to evolve my Magnemite into a Magneton, I just need to level them up normally, but to evolve them into a Magnezone, I just got to level them up once inside of Mount Coronet. One last encounter before the mansion and uh, all right, sure. These two dumbass guards are protecting the entrance and they both have a Soul Rock and a Lunatone, but uh, I just have two guys with flash cannon, so just gonna check for items before I head inside, though. Is that the TM for safeguard? Yes! Yes! This run is saved! Oh my god, yes! To complete this mansion event, you have to beat all of the grunts that are guarding rooms, but there's this one grunt at the end of the hall that's really fucking annoying. You have to defeat three grunts back to back to back, but you have to do it in exactly six turns, which it's just an inconvenience, uh, especially because the third grunt has a Shed Ninja, and it has a Focus Sash, so you have to have two turns remaining for the last trainer. Oh, and every time you beat one of the Grunts, a Clefairy escapes. Where are they going? Yeah, so all the Clefairy just come over here, and they're just gonna gang up and beat the shit out of this guy. Oh man, I'm having a really good time just chilling in front of this door. Oh yeah. <laughs> where, where did he go? Where did you guys just send him? You know what? Never mind. I don't even care. <gasps> Where, where, where am I? No, 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 this can't be anywhere but England, please. Oh, you have something for me, Hapini? Oh. And because I mentioned it previously, we have to do a tag battle between the Team Galactic admin Saturn and what's this guy's name? Mr. Backshot. Kind of a tricky lead to figure out for this fight. Uh, they have a Bronzong and a Wigglytuff, so I decide that I'm just gonna send out my Empoleon. A turn one Flash Cannon into the Wigglytuff is enough to take it out because I get a crit. I don't even know if that mattered, but I doubt it. Sturivia just goes for a double team, but the Bronzong cannot put me to sleep because I have Vital Spirit. Look at Raichu, man. He's just happy to be here. I swap over to Magnezone because I'm not sure which slot this Raichu is going to Thunderbolt, but he goes for the Staravia. I mean, he also could have 
faked me out, but I don't know. It's just not even worth taking that risk. And then the Bronzong just decides to be a bitch about it. A Thunderbolt once again into my teammate's slot is going to hurt the Heracross, but he's able to get off a Bug Bite onto the Bronzong. Don't worry, though, because the guy is here to not help. Oh, yeah, and then Bronzong just fucking kills Heracross. Bro, I love that Snorlax animation. He's just like, hey, what's up, guys? Raichu this turn decides to go for a teeter dance, but I'm already confused, so this doesn't really affect me. Speaking of confusion, we're not hitting ourselves this turn, baby. Boom, try attack. It's not going to kill, but try attack like always gives status. Yep, there's the burn. Snorlax is confused, but he actually remembers that he doesn't remember anything. Okay, now this Raichu is just like really fucking stupid because he just teeter dances, but everyone's already confused, and now just nobody is attacking, right? Like I'm hitting myself, the Bronzong is is gonna snap out. He's gonna miss the hypnosis and Snorlax is also confused, but oh, he's gonna hit himself. <laughs> oh, and you know, just to be safe, the Raichu just has to go for yet another teeter dance. Fuck you. Espeon just goes for a protect. Uh, so Bronzong and Snorlax have done like literally fucking nothing the last two or three turns. Uh, a psychic into my Magnezone isn't gonna do much and I'm going to return fire with a flash cannon. You know, the best thing that happened this turn is that Snorlax just fucking dies. Like just please give me another teammate. Okay, is there another teammate or is... Okay, Espeon is still being a bitch. So nothing happens this turn other than Primplup landing a Scald on the Bronzong. Yeah, so another turn passed and I'm just getting bored of this shit. This is taking too long. Magnezone, can you just kill everybody? Thanks. Finally, it's now just down to a 1v1. Octillery's got Flamethrower, so I'm just going to swap over to Jolteon to tank that before I just murder him with a Thunderbolt. I'm just going to let my golem take care of this Toxicroak because it can easily eat the poison jab and maybe a drain punch. I don't really care if you die, golem. Haha, -ha, planned all from the start. Now perish. Gah, let me just say that Mr. Backshot means business. Now, I'm just going to go back to the PC, drop off a Mon, and pick up the special egg that he wants to give me. Wow, a special blue and red egg. Oh, I think it's a Manaphy. Oh, yeah, and then in the trophy garden out back, you can catch a baby Mon, and I end up with a Happini. So, okay. Oh, the egg is hatching. It's a Manaphy. Oh. Yeah, so as you can probably tell, I really don't give a shit about Manaphy because I've Nuzlocked this game before, but it was literally just unlock Manaphy and sweep the game. So, oh yeah, also I forgot to hit record when I went through this route to get to Salacion Town, uh, but really nothing interesting happens. So I didn't really see it as a big deal. The only notable thing that happens between uh, the mansion and here is that I unlocked ball capsules, which like are pretty epic. It's just annoying as tell that if I put a ball capsule on somebody, I have to take it off before I can put them back in the box. It's just annoying and tedious. Oh, yeah. Um, I also totally caught the spirit tomb and it didn't uh, kill itself. Right. <laughs> and yeah, this is my encounter. Uh, Mr. Cricketune. Music man. Other than that, there's really nothing important that happens on this route. I mean, the cool part of this route is just these Psyduck up here that are just kind of chilling. You know, they're just like cool like that. It's also really disappointing that the next route, my encounter is a Hypno. I fucking hate this guy. Really wish I was still on my old run where I had my uh, Gligar because this is where you'd get the Razor Fang and the Razor Claw. So, hey, if this was my first run, I would have a Weevil and a Gliscor right now, but I don't. So <laughs> then there is this annoying double battle at the end of the route, but I love this game because I can just do two single battles if I really want to. So it's not a big deal. Cause I mean, if you had to do this as a double battle, this would take a lot more planning and time and effort to do. But when it's a single battle, you can just blow through them. But now we make it to probably one of my more favorite cities in the Sinnoh region. There is a lot for us to do here. Um, French guy. Uh, okay. I do get the dubious disc, so now Perk 30 can fully evolve. And the department store actually has a lot of good stuff, and I am definitely going to be grabbing some better Pokeballs. I make sure to go to the counter that sells Evolution Stones, and I grab a few extra because I know that I'll probably end up getting a few Pokemon down the road that might require one of these stones. On the top floor of this department store, we encounter Bertha, who's like, oh, hey, what up, kiddo? Here's the TM for Earthquake. Yeah! 
So like, that's pretty cool. Just two buff guys standing side by side, not six feet apart because they're really gay. I may win battles. I may become champion. I may win the Nuzlocke, but I will never be as cool as two buff guys standing side by side. This trainer in the Pokemon Center uh, has dragon types, but if you beat him in a battle, he gives you the dragon scale. So now I can evolve my Seedra. Hey, kitten. Hey, what's up, bro? Good luck challenging this gym. Thanks, man. I know it's going to be kind of tough. I just hope a big, shirtless, muscular, hot man doesn't spontaneously appear behind me. Oh, fuck. Hey, it's me. Uh, I'm a big, hot, muscular man. Uh, all right, see ya. I will leave no stone left unturned, so I'm going to make sure I hit every building here before I challenge the gym. Uh... Looker, why are you here? Arg, I have a crippling gambling addiction. Hey man, do you need some help? Because I know this is like pretty serious. Uh, I don't want you to throw your life away gambling at these slots. Nonsense. 99% of all gamblers quit right before they hit it big. I must keep grinding. I honestly forget how the gambling goes in this game. Is it literally just like I roll and I press three buttons? Wow. Okay, next roll. Cool, I guess. Oh, oh, I do know. Wait, the shiny Clefairy is pretty sick, right? Yay. Yay. Let's go, baby. Gamblers always win. All right, whatever. This gym's puzzle isn't really that bad. You just kind of have to like slap around these big dangling sacks. Uh, I'm pretty good at that. Hey, trainer. Are you one of my Pokey fan subscribers? Uh, no. That's okay. I'm actually doing a 50% off deal right now for pictures of my feet. Want to see? Are you going to charge me for this? Because I'm more of an ass kind of guy. No, the first one is free. I mean, all right. <laughs> okay, thanks, Maylene. Buy my feet pics, you turbo virgin. Nah, um, uh, e uh, <laughs> I, I didn't make her say this. <laughs> uh, no. A shadow ball from Frostlass is going to immediately take out the Medicham. But here comes the monkey. We swap to Gastrodon, and we're going to tank the Fire Punch, and then swap over to Home Depot, who is going to tank the Close Combat, since that is Infernape's highest damaging move on my Gastrodon. Goodbye. Home Depot is holding a Choice Scarf, but I forgot that he was originally holding a Life Orb, so I thought this would kill, and it doesn't. Oh, we get the flinch, though. Yippee! All right, that's whatever. He's still dead. I'm a fuck it, we ball kind of guy. So surely you either kill or flinch here, right? Um... Oh, no! He's getting payback on me! Oh, no! But it's a good thing that I don't believe in critical hits. <laughs> All right, I pushed my luck far enough with Rotom. Togekiss is going to come in and tank the Zen Headbutt, but that does a lot more than I was anticipating. So I'm just going to bring in my Gyarados to intimidate the Gallade and tank the next Zen Headbutt. I'm unsure if I should just set up here, but I decided to go for an Aqua Tail because it's my highest damaging move. Um, it's whatever. Okay, or you could just crit him, Gerald. All right, my goat. Please buy my feet picks, please. I need the money. No, shut the fuck up. Go away. Lucario has a Focus Sash, but it doesn't have the moveset to actually deal with my Gyarados. So I'm going to make use of that TM for Earthquake that I found. Now that Lucario has no Focus Sash and he's on 1 HP, I know that Maylene is going to want to use a potion. Doesn't really matter, though, because no matter what I do, I still just win if I click Earthquake. But... <laughs> It's a lot funnier if I just get the Ice Fang freeze. <laughs> wobble dee wobble dee wop. All right, whatever. Take the feet badge. But can you please recommend my page to your friends? No. Oh, <laughs> hey. Uh, so I suck at battling and I got my Pokédex stolen. That sucks. Can you please help me? Fine. Yippee! Alright, let's go help this idiot out. Okay, I can tell this is gonna take like five seconds. Well, that was a waste of time. 
No, you're useless even with your Pokedex. Arg, I am here to save the day. Hey, what's up, Looker? Did you uh, finally finish gambling? Yes, I lost it all. And she took the fucking kids. Uh, okay, oh my god. Inside the warehouse, I get the HM4 fly, and now I can finally start to head south. The best part about this route is that it is one route away from probably the coolest area in the game. And no, I'm not talking about this stupid tunnel where I get a diglet, or even this guy who just gives me a choice band. You know what area I'm talking about. Oh, and uh, my encounter for this route is a Numa, which is pretty cool. I was just curious what this item over here was, but it's just a red shard, so... Ooh, meatball man. Hell yeah, I'm gonna catch this guy. And yeah, I'm gonna replace my other golem. This is the area I was talking about. I love Valor Lakefront. And you know, I get a Nido King encounter here, which not my favorite, but I'll take it. I get the TM4 energy ball, and then I actually get to go chill in this luxurious resort. Oh man, I really hope they serve steamed clams at this restaurant. <gasps> no. They only have steam tams! This, this is unbelievable, man. What, next are you gonna tell me that there's Aurora Borealis at this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your kitchen? Ugh, shame on you. All right, guys, let's play a game called What Will The Reporters Say? Yeah! where I take a few blinkers of my Benjamin and then I come up with the dialogue interaction with this reporter because I don't know what the fuck it's gonna be while I'm saying this. <laughs> Who knows? Ask future me. <laughs> fuck. What the fuck do you want? No, 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 oh my God, no. I'll find the sweet key first try. Yup. Hey, dumbass, here's your key. And just like that, we're through the resort and now we make our way over to Pastoria. Wait, the foot house? Uh. I think this guy likes feet, but I can't tell. Hey, it's me, Dr. Feet. <sighs> Do you have... Can I see your Pokemon's feet, please? Oh. <sighs> I get my encounter over here in this patch of grass, and I end up with a Shuckle. You don't fuckle with the Shuckle. Oh, I also get the TM for Roar. Yes! And now it's Pastoria time. Hey, guys, here's my impression of me if I was a Crow Gunk. <clears throat> Crow gunk. Yo, what up, gang? You wish you could do something that involved explosives? Oh, well, it's a good thing that there's not an airport in this region. I'm gonna get my Great Marsh encounter while I'm here. For real, though, these trolleys are, like, really stupid and slow. Like, what is the point of this? Look. Like, dude, I probably could have ran here faster than this trolley got me here. Whatever. Give me my encounter. What am I getting? Banana man. Oh, I actually got to catch it though. Shit. All right, get in my ball. Uh, oh, oh, my bad guys. I forgot to say please. <clears throat> please get in my ball. Yeah, it's what I thought, banana bitch. Banana. Now, I really didn't do a good job of recording all of the instances in which this happens, but there are three trainers throughout the game where if you grant their wish by showing them a specific Pokemon or showing them a certain move or whatever, uh, you know, you get something pretty cool. You get a pretty cool encounter. Uh, lucky for me, this is the third instance of where you have to do it. And to complete the final step, you need a Jigglypuff. So thank God we have just that. Before I forget about it, though, I'm just going to go complete this route because I have to make it through this route to go talk to Wake before I can challenge the gym. Now, I've talked a lot about my favorite routes in the game. This is probably one of my least favorite. Like, I just it, there's no fun in getting stuck in mud every two steps. And also there's just grass patches everywhere. The last obstacle before I can talk to Wake, however, is a forced double battle. And by forced, I mean, I'm forcing them to do two single battles. Oh, what's up, Wake? Uh, oh, shit, uh, he's singing. Yeah. Wait, hold up, let me crash, listen. Crash, crash, crash your wake. It's yo bitch I'm gonna take. Grab some kush and I'm a bake. Get your girl wet like she's a lake. Uh. Wow, that was a pretty sick rap, bro. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, I'll battle you at the gym. All right, sound good? Yeah, I'll see you there. Pastoria is the other way. Where are you going? All right, well, now that the gym is open, I got some business to take care of. If I head to the bottom of the ruins, man, I really wish I could get some bitches. <gasps> Jirachi, did you come here to grant my wish? So this is where I need the Jigglypuff because apparently I just asked the Jigglypuff to sing to it and then I can battle Jirachi. All right, go crazy, Jigglypuff. 
Wow, it looks like Jirachi really liked it. Now, actually catching Jirachi is going to be more of a challenge. Uh, it doesn't have any attacking moves other than Iron Head and Future Sight. So I could put it to sleep and I get a little lucky. Uh, it wakes up and I hit it with a Force Palm and it gets paralyzed. So pretty much all I'm going to do is just throw balls and hope for the best. Worst case scenario, I just have to run. Plus, I have a lot of expendable mons in my box, so I brought some along. Lucky for you, Paul, you live another day. I know I didn't want to use Manaphy, but like Manaphy's different, bro. That shit gets tail glow. And if you know, you know, just I fucking hate Kecleon. One sec though, just got to flex the Shundo. So just out of pure spite, uh, I am going to make this thing shiny. I completely forgot to mention this NPC that just gives me a free Lapras. Goobus. One sec. Let me beat this guy's cheeks. Um. Staraptor? I barely know her. <laughs> Arcanine is not a big deal. I could just whip out my huge boner and I somehow dodge the first heat wave. The second one does hit, but I can return fire with an earthquake that after about 30 seconds of HP dropping, it kills. Despite the Breloom having a very easy fast kill on me, it decides to go for a spore anyways. Womp womp. I decide to stay in and burn a turn of sleep because the Breloom is either gonna go for a rock tomb or a force palm and I really don't wanna swap into someone having their speed lowered or even worse, getting paralyzed. I bring out my hip Note to do the sex offender shuffle, and because I have insomnia and can't be put to sleep, I just start chipping away with some psycho cuts. Hypno, this is why no one likes you. Whatever, we eat a force palm, we avoid the paralysis, and we finish off the Berloom with a psycho cut. Sensing the Mega Horn, I swap over to Home Depot, who just avoids it anyways. Uh, we go for an Air Slash, but because of the berry on the Heracross, it's not going to kill on the first shot. The Heracross still goes for Mega Horn this turn, but uh, it's not very effective, so I'm going to easily live that and finish him off cleanly the next turn. I predict the Body Slam, so I swap over to Frost Slash, easy peasy, and then I bring in the Goat. We eat the crunch, put him in the Kush coma. This does get a little uncomfortable because a Force Palm barely doesn't kill, and the Snorlax has Sleep Talk, and it manages to get off a Body Slam. And we, um... We don't die, but we do get paralyzed. Luckily, there's not a problem in the world that a big boner can't fix. I'm just gonna put Hypno once again on the front line to eat the Scald. Luckily, we do avoid the burn. Things got a little sketchy this fight, so I'm just gonna let my Hypno 1v1 this Empoleon, but it surprises me and goes for an agility. After evaluating my options, I decide my best bet is just to sack Hypno, if anything. But the Empoleon goes for a swagger. You don't, you don't actually hit yourself in confusion, right? Yeah, it's what I fucking thought. Now we have to deal with Wake. And yeah, of course the gym has rain. Yo girl, when she finds out I'm a grown ass man making penis jokes and playing Pokemon. Nice. Man, it's so tiring being me, Crasher Wake, and being so like big and hot and handsome. Like, ugh. Okay, yeah, we could battle. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh no, rain. I'll fix that. Haha, you can't touch me with your old puny water moves. Oh yeah, and we picked up a flame orb from the game corner. I, I definitely could have just pre-burned into this fight, but whatever. Fuck him up, goat. We After Mr. Weed perfectly tanks this earthquake, uh, even though the Quagsire has a Rindo Berry, which is gonna resist my grass move, um, he's gonna need more than that to survive a cut. Being able to bait a killing move while also switching my Gyarados in to intimidate his Gyarados is gonna be huge. While his Gyarados goes for damage, I do a little dancey dance. Gerald whiffs the Ice Fang like a little bitch, which only makes this 1v1 just a little scarier. It's a good thing though that I have a Citrus Berry. I actually land the Ice Fang this time for, you know, a little bit of damage, but missing that Ice Fang the previous turn is now going to make me pay the price. The next turn, Wake goes for another Dragon Dance on his Gyarados, meanwhile I just go for an Ice Fang because I'm gonna have to activate plan B and bring in one of my speedy boys. Or just fucking crit him and kill him, okay. I still have a Dragon Dance set up, so I go for an Earthquake to bring the Sharpedo down to his Focus Sash, and I tank a Crunch, and it does quite a lot more than I was anticipating. He's back! Wee. It doesn't even matter that uh, Wake uses a Hyper Potion. Lamau. 
I swap in my Frost Last because it resists basically everything the Polyrath can throw at me, uh, though I do get lucky that I don't get put to sleep. Okay, I, I, I promise I'm not doing anything. I don't know why I'm getting so many crits. Speaking of crits, uh, Jolteon, I'm gonna need you to not get crit by this crunch. Okay, okay, cool. I gotta tank a random move from Ludicolo, but luckily for me, when I switch in my Rattam, he whiffs the Hydro Pump. ka -chow. All right, well, it's tragic that that doesn't kill or flinch. Uh, Rattam, you, you're an atheist, right? You don't believe in critical hits? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's go, I received the moist badge. Oh, I just didn't even realize that this is where I got waterfall. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. All right, what's with this kinky ass writing? Why is my rival calling Wake Master? Hey, kitten. Hello, my master. I just love how Goober casually drops the, oh yeah, by the way, there's just a guy with a bomb over at the Safari Zone. Bro's just so casual about it too. Like he just doesn't give a shit. Hey, 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 bomb go boom. Yep, one of us should um definitely go chase that guy. Yeah, I'd love to, but master's got to spend some time with his kitten. Meow. You guys are unbelievable. Get back here, scum. Go away. Meow. Yes. Stop running, coward. I don't wanna. Hey. Oh, hey, where'd you come from? Can you please lend me $25? I promise I will pay you back. What do you need it for? Gambling. <laughs> no. Fiddlesticks. What does this guy do all day? Wait. Are you really just asking people for money? Uh, uh, um, uh, no. Okay, dude, give it up. I will not yield. Okay, I yield. Now say you're sorry. I am sorry. Sorry, sorry for, for what? what? I am sorry for my act of domestic terrorism. Good. Now get out of here. <laughs> All in a day's work. <laughs> hey, you want some drugs? Oh, hell yeah, Cynthia. I didn't realize you were chill like that. You know, I actually know some really chill guys who might want to do these with me. <laughs> Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, wait, no. Oh, come back. I want to be friends. I really hope Cynthia doesn't come give me an item that I have to deliver to her grandma. Shit. Oh, well, we press onwards. I mean, like, for real, thank God that there's no fog on this route right now. Mainly because, like, one, I don't want to have to teach a useless HM to one of my guys, but it's just so annoying. Now, some of the trainers on this route are definitely intimidating. A lot of them, though, are technically optional. So if you can avoid them, it's probably best to do so because, yeah, I've uh, I've had a few runs in the past that have lost some mons or even just wiped me because I didn't intend to fight them. And yeah, why the fuck does Jirachi get Draco Meteor naturally? Like what? Okay, yeah, but also this old man in particular? Fuck this guy. Oh boy, we made it to the town. Stop right there, Pookie. What do you want? Parentheses. I am going to touch as you. Parentheses. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Alakazam lead, one man for the job. Fuck him up, Paul. What? What? A quick swap to Crobat lets us eat this play rough, and we can just one-shot the Grand Bull with a Cross Poison. I gotta shift some of the boys around, so I swap over to Jirachi to soak what I know is not going to be a ground move. And now that I know it is a guaranteed ground move, I swap over to Sceptile. Sceptile, please don't embarrass yourself. Sceptile, we're supposed to fuck the Vaporeon, not get fucked by it. I really just need two more Kecleons, bro. You can't run from your fate. Yeah, I just need to do a couple psychics. Uh, I tank a Hydro Pump and then Vaporeon goes down. Free swap to Crobat because I know that the Torterra is going to go for an Earthquake. And I just say, fuck it, we ball and get a little Leech Life healing. I do have to eat this Rock Slide, though. See, like, at this point, you probably wonder why I risk so many crits. Um, I mean, if you look at, like, Run and Bun or some shit, uh, where the crits are only, like, 1.5, but in this game, they're two times damage, which makes it much harder to even, like, think about pivoting. I don't know. I really don't give a shit. Uh, plus, also, crits aren't real. What's a crit? Never heard of it. 
<laughs> this thing is awful. I swapped to Paul to avoid the Zen headbutt, and I just want to try and fish for a poison. One sucker punch and body slam later, and Paul needs to be swapped out. Now, I have a couple of outs here, but I'm just going to swap to Infernape and hope that I don't get paralyzed. <laughs> Sick. I must be John Cena the way I'm bing chilling. Wait, so why are you even here? What, like, what do you have to come to this town for? I got a notification on my phone saying there are hot singles in this town that are wanting to sex me. Fishing in Celestic Town lands me a Relicanth. Septile's gone. You know what that means. It's time to get silly with it. So logically, I came to just one conclusion. I must assemble the Dream Team. Golem. Bastiodon. Shuckle. Rhyhorn. Blissey. With their powers combined alongside the Relicanth that I just picked up in this town, I will assemble Team Make-A-Wish. Without realizing it, uh, by going up and interacting with the shrine, you can just take the GS ball inside, which in turn will allow me to catch a Celebi. You scum, I'll show you the power of Team Make-A-Wish. You can't stop me. I'll show you the true power of my big boner. Ooh, uh, actually, never mind. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll try again. Fuck him up, Shuckle. No, Embargo, I can't use items anymore. You really think you can hurt me? Wop, 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 wop. <laughs> That's only 10% of my true power. Looks like someone hasn't learned their lesson. I don't care about your outrage. Hit me, bitch. Oh shit, don't hit me. Meatball. All right, now I gotta lock in. I don't think I need to explain uh, that an outrage from a bee drill is just not gonna hurt my Bastiodon. Okay, this Golbat literally can't hurt me. He can just inconvenience me. Yeah, I just kind of kept clicking Stone Edge until my guy decided to just finally wake the fuck up. Oh, hey, Granny, are you one of those hot singles that uh my friend was talking about? Oh, you're Cynthia's gilf grandma. Okay, hold up, guys. I just got to examine this ancient cave painting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. Okay, I can confirm that it is ancient, it is in a cave, and I think those are Pokemon. Yes, those are Pokemon. Oh, hey, Cyrus, what's up? Nothing much just finished eating at Femboy Hooters. I lost count of how many glasses of man milk I drank. Damn, buddy's lost in the sauce. All oh, right, I'm the evil guy. <sighs> okay, let's battle now. This fight with Cyrus only has four mons, so safe to say, nothing that team Make-A-Wish can't handle. Fuck him up, big boner. And by big boner, I mean blissy because I fucked up the lead. But it's a good thing that this crowbat only knows special moves. All right, time to play a silly little game called Please Don't Poison Me with a Sludge Bomb because I'm just going to minimize six times. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I keep getting put to sleep, but the crowbat can't kill me because I just can heal myself with a soft boil. But yeah, it was inevitable that you eventually die to a seismic toss. I don't even care about having a Blissey. I just kind of want to see how much bullshit I can get away with here. No, he made me have swag. Lock in, Blissey. Damn it. Don't hit. Yeah. Okay. Miss the torment. Not like that matters. Lock in, Blissey. Damn it. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. You whiffed that brave bird. Feel my wrath, bitch. No, he hit the brave bird. No, Blissey. No. No! No, Blissey! No! 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 Yeah, it's about 30 seconds of my life that I'm not gonna get back. All right, let's get horny. Never mind, I'm scared. Beep, 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 beep. Not even this Magnezone is gonna be an issue because I can just press Metal Burst twice and kill him. You know, as long as I don't die to the second Thunderbolt, right? <laughs> Team Make-A-Wish prevails yet again. I only lost because I have an upset tummy. All right, time to get this trash out of my party. Before we progress any further, I want to get my other two encounters. Now, before I mention the uh, satisfying wish condition for Jirachi, but there's also these uh, little... Pokemon that spawn around that are like, hey, can you give me a berry or something? Uh, and if you give them to the Pokemon, then it turns into a Mew. So that's pretty neat. But I need to head into Eterna Forest so I can get an old Gateau from the Chateau. But this is also where you happen to encounter Celebi. Scattered throughout Eterna Forest are eight portals, which are eight individual single battles. 
These battles are cool because they represent the eight gym leaders from the Johto region. So this first battle I'm doing is Faulkner, which each battle is just going to be uh, trying to defeat each gym leader's respective ace Pokemon. Now I'll come back to Celebi in a moment, but after getting the old Ghetto, you can head over here to surf in Pastoria and you can find this Torchic. This Torchic is obviously Mew and you have to give it an old Ghetto. After the three encounters you have with Mew, you can head over to Route 201, where he's apparently just waiting for you. Oh, yeah, no, he's that Pachirisu up there. I know I said I've played this game, but I've never actually done these encounters. I've never encountered Mew or Celebi or even Jirachi, weirdly enough. Pretty cool. All right, well, I got to continue on with the story. Oh, man, I hope Mew isn't nearly as difficult to catch as Jirachi. Whew, that was a tough one. Okay, now it's time to go finish the Eterna Forest stuff. Bugsy has a Scizor, we got Whitney's Miltank, Morty's Gengar, and everything else. I don't know, it wasn't too difficult. Once you beat all eight of those battles though, another portal will open up, which allows you to actually battle Celebi. I just hope this Celebi isn't gonna be too difficult to catch, you know? It didn't work. Well, I guess it's time to speed up and just throw balls because this thing can't actually hurt me. <laughs> okay. I think after the Exeggutor incident, I really just shouldn't be trusted with uh, grass and psychic types. Now, I went to the Move Tutor because I just wanted to see what Mew had. Uh, yeah, these are mythical Pokemon, but I don't plan on doing anything super broken with them. I more so just plan on being silly. One thing that I don't want to forget because I did just get the HM for Surf, uh, I need to go to Fuego Ironworks. And this also includes coming over to here to get the TM for Thunderbolt. I do get an encounter over here and based off of what's available, I decided to just go for a honey tree. And a beautiful eye, that's good fodder at some point, right? The only real point to coming into Fuego Ironworks is the fact that you get the TM4 flamethrower over here. Other than that, there's really not much to do in here. And so we head down to Pal Park. There's just a bunch of swimming trainers here, but nothing that Mr. Weed and Home Depot can't handle. For Route 220, I fish up a love disc, whomst I appropriately name Thundercock. And after I make it to land, and I get my encounter in the grass and I just end up with a Dodrio. He got three heads, but he only got two phones. You can't actually do anything at Pal Park. Um, you're just here for story reasons. Hey, what up, Gramps? Hey, it's me, Professor Oak, and I love Pokemon. All right, see ya. Wow, so glad I came out here for that. This guy over here by the window just looked like a little bitch, so I just had the strong desire to go over there, beat his ass, and steal his tea. Waluigi looking ass. Gardevoir is never dying to a Leaf Blade crit, and we can just one shot the Gallade with a Life Orb boosted Moonblast. Bring him out, bring him out. Whee! I was hoping to not switch into a Flash Cannon, but it's fine because not every crit roll is gonna kill me. Sick. Life Orb Technician Rock Smash. <laughs> Straptor is unlikely to use its normal type move, so I can easily just tank a close combat or a Brave Bird. So now you die to a Thunderbolt. Entei is Polyrath's dream matchup because they're gonna resist pretty much everything that they can throw at me, other than extreme speed, but it's not gonna be enough to take me out. All I gotta do is just land two waterfalls and Entei is said and done for. Same thing that just happened is about to happen again because Jirachi is able to soak up pretty much everything the Alakazam can throw at me and then just one shot him with a single shadow ball. I swap over to Ratom to avoid the earthquake and Mightyana to avoid the Zen headbutt. At this point in the fight, I really didn't have anything that could just safely swap in and 1v1 the Metagross without risking at least one or two crits. Uh, so Paul, you're just gonna do as much damage with that sucker punch as you can and then I will see you on the other side. But a Metagross that is less than half HP is no problem for Home Depot. I wasn't kidding about earlier there, bro. I'm, I'm gonna need that tea. All right, well, with that out of the way, it looks like I can finally now go to Canalive City. Well, uh, should I? Uh, 
I, I, I don't want to know. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm out. Oh boy, I can't wait to drink this tea. Hi, bruv. You got a license for that tea? Uh, no. Well, bang is my mash and call me a bundle of sticks. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to confiscate that tea. Want some tea? Give me my tea, bitch. Glug, glug, glug in it. Mmm. Damn, that shit good. Before we can do the next gym, there is going to be one more rival fight. Yo, what's up, Goober Berry Penis? Hello, my slime. Before we battle, I was thinking of trying out a new catchphrase. I mean, you do you, but if it's dog shit, I'm gonna let you know. Righty O! Micro Penis! Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that shit kinda went hard. I wonder how many times I'm gonna have Ratom just clock in Thunderbolt to Raptor and clock out. Because Ratom has a choice scarf on, I need to pivot through Relicanth real quick. I just gotta swap back and tank the close combat, and then I can put him in the ground. ka -chow. Yo, who the fuck is this fraud? Shomu's boss, baby. Wee. We're just eating a Stone Edge, it's no big deal. And we outspeed, so good night. Rock Smash. How dare you use a Focus Sash, you coward. He still stays asleep though, so. You know me, when I see a dog, I gotta whip out my balls. Specifically, just to tank this close combat. The Arcanine can try as much as it wants to close combat or flare blitz me. It is not going to survive a Choice Band's huge power waterfall. I bring back in Mr. Wee. to soak up a grass knot. Rock smash. That's what I'm talking about, baby. He's unstoppable. And this is perfect, too, because I have just enough HP remaining to where I don't die from a life orb. Mr. Weed! No! Get fucked, noob! It's only appropriate that I give him a proper burial and I give Mr. Weed his own place to rest. But we gotta keep moving forward and I'm gonna start by checking every house and talking to every NPC. Are you fucking kidding me? You will never escape me. The last thing I have to do before I can get my next gym badge is I gotta head to Iron Island. Whee! I still don't really understand the point of coming here. Hey, Mr. Gym Leader Man, can you go back to Canalive so I can battle you? Are you the bastard who swept my son's gym with a single Geodude? Maybe? I will obliterate your balls. Fight time. Hey, kiddo, I serve no real purpose for progressing the story of this game. Okay, so what? I do have that drip on, though. Yeah, I can't lie, the fits fire. We outspeed. Bonk. Infernape has no chance against the Salamence, so I bring out the Gooby Boy who is going to tank this fly. Now, the Salamence does have a power herb, so the fly is only going to take one turn. It does quite a bit, but I put leftovers on Goobus for a reason. I could have gone for an Ice Shard this turn, but I went for an Ice Beam. I swore he was just going to go for like a Dragon Rush or a Dragon Dance, but oh well. Because of the leftovers, we can afford to take another hit, and I could just one-shot the Salamence with an Ice Beam. This Lucario has a life orb and it has adaptability, so even though I swap into Gyarados and I intimidate him once, uh, he's still gonna hit me like a truck. Like, that's not bad damage. Like, there is a world where I could die here. Not this world, though. Yeah, <laughs> get out of here, bitch. The only move that this Ursa Ring can hit me with is Play Rough, so that's not gonna do a lot considering I just resist it. Mm, yeah, it's fine. And now we just get to watch him burn to death. <laughs> Yo, fun fact, if you hit a Metagross with a Shadow Ball, he just fucking dies. And you know how slacking works, you just gotta tank one move, and then you can basically attack twice for free. An Energy Ball gets rid of the Citrus Berry, and I swap over to Frostlast to just be immune to the Body Slam. I go for the Ice Beam because I can afford to take a hit, and luckily for me, I hit the critical hit, which saves me about 30 seconds of time. Great battle. Would you like to accompany me in a meaningless five-minute journey through this cave? Uh, sure, yeah, I got nothing better to do. I got to meet Riley in one of the further rooms into the cave, but I do end up finding a protector so I can evolve my Rhydon into Rhyperior later on, uh, but my encounter for this area is just a Steelix. Yeehaw, bitch cake! What did you call me? Let's go for a stroll in this cave together. Yippee! Really, all you got to do is, like, two, maybe three mandatory double battles, the last of which is with two Plasma Grunts, but... 
Eh, there's nothing really difficult here. Okay, I take it back. Uh, Frostlass is fucking dead. I still don't think there's an actual story reason for why Team Plasma is here, other than to just, quote, take the Pokemon. Uh, I thought Iron Island was better as a feature of like, a, oh, hey, this is a completely separate area of the map that you can explore on your own, blah, blah, blah. When it's mandatory, it's kind of like, eh. But yeah, Team Plasma is never really difficult if all they're ever going to use is poison type Pokemon. I, I just realized this after the fact. How many times am I going to say Plasma instead of Galactic? Huh. After winning and getting the HM for strength from Riley, we can finally move on. All right, can we battle now? Oh shit, you made it through the cave. That's badass. Yeah, we can battle. Time to sail home. Whee! After setting up my squad, it's time for me to go abuse yet another gym leader. I had quite a few guys faint recently, so I've just decided, eh, let's just do this gym fight with two Pokemon. That sounds about right. I think this gym has a cool concept with the lifts and elevators that go all over the place, but it's kind of bare bones and there's not really much happening, but I can't really expect more from a boring, stupid ass steel type gym trainer. So I think the only thing that could possibly stop me from just sweeping this gym is if he had a shovel. Oh no! Your balls, my shovel, you do the math. Not a chance. Go get him, Mr. President. Yeah, so Garchomp is literally just here to set stealth rocks. Uh, all right, your job is done, Mr. President. Chicken 1v6. Gyro Ball is Bronzong's only attacking move, which is not going to hurt us at all. So now Byron just gets to watch as we set up Swords Dance to get to plus six, and he just tries to panic and set up light screens and reflects. Combine this with Blaziken having speed boost, and now the sweep begins. Setting up Stealth Rocks first before the sweep was necessary because Agron has a Focus Sash and the Fortress has Sturdy. So with Stealth Rocks set up, there's nothing he can do to avoid it. Uh, but it is quite cute when the Bastiodon comes out and he tries to protect for a turn or two just to avoid the inevitable. You know, Byron, it's not that bad because while I only swept Rourke with a single Geo Dude, it actually required two Pokemon for me to sweep you. Fuck you. Soaking wet, soaking wet. You throwing that back and it's gripping and hugging, gripping and hugging. Like father, like son, the two worst gym leaders in the Sinnoh region. Hey, 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 I found a stash of Playboy in the library. Wait, wait, wait for me. Hurry, there are big boobies. This is the best day of my life. Yo, glad I can make it. What, is this like a circle jerk or something? Come on, all. Don't be weird. Okay. JK, I've been jorking my shit all morning. Sorry, the pages are a little sticky. Hey, do any of these magazines have, like, hot Fortnite girls in them? Real women scare me. No, these are actual women, dude. Hmm, I'll just wait until I get home and throw on some Overwatch SFM. Was that an earthquake? Oh, for sure. Oh, I remember, I remember. Barry, can you turn on the TV real quick? Sure thing! Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. It's just Queso doing an IRL stream over in Eterna Forest. Relax. I am exhausted, though. I need a little bit of a break, so I'm going to head over to Valor Lakefront and just chill for a bit. But first, I'm going to level up my guys and evolve my Rhydon into Rhyperior, like I mentioned earlier. This isn't a lake. This is a bathtub. I'm deep in enemy territory. I got to make sure that I'm stealthy. I can't risk being noticed. All according to plan, I can now commence the sneak attack. <laughs> Hey, you seen this shit? Yeah, I forgot to mention earlier that I got the Murkrow from the Lost Tower on Route 209. Polyrath is fucking ballin' because we easily eat the Stone Edge and then we could just one-shot the ride on with a single waterfall. Heh, <laughs> get a load of this guy. Aw, it doesn't kill, but I'm not afraid of Bronzong. This guy does no damage. <laughs> editor, can you put two balls on my Tropius? Oh wait, I'm still the editor. Leaf Blade isn't gonna be enough to kill the Octillery, so it's gonna survive, and luckily it doesn't have Ice Beam, so all it can do is hit me with a Flamethrower, which isn't gonna be enough to take me out. One more Leaf Blade to put the Octillery in the ground. A quick swap over to my Rhyperior is going to easily soak up this Gunk Shot. I then swap over to Mew because I can soak up the Cross Chop, but the problem is that this Toxicroak has Sucker Punch. I just kind of say, fuck it, we ball. Uh, he's going to go for the Sucker Punch this turn, so it's not going to hit. And I'm just going to soak up this Cross Chop because Rhyperior is thick like that. Mmm, delicious. 
I better check in with the gang at the other two lakes to make sure they're doing all right. Oh, Alt, thank goodness you made it. Lucas is being cornered by a real-life woman, and he needs your help. I'll take care of it, Professor. I'm really good at scaring away women. I mean, first, there's two double battles, but what do they have? A dust ox and a beautifly. Okay. What about these grunts? What do they have? A knee okay. Oh, my God. Okay. <clears throat> hey, leave him alone. He's clearly terrified. Nope. What are you going to do about it, scrub? I'll just have to beat you in a Pokemon battle. In your dreams, kiddo. But if you insist... Okay, Lucas, shut the fuck up. Because Empoleon cannot be put to sleep, all the Crobat can really do to me is hit me with a Brave Bird or a Giga Drain. Uh, no matter what, though, it's just going to be me hitting him twice before he faints. I'm going to swap in Steelix. Uh, even though he has really shitty special defense, he should still live a Bug Buzz if it doesn't crit. Okay, cool. Ooh, that is less cool. I straight up just, like, can't lose momentum and swap around here, so, uh, Dildozer, I think you just gotta lock in, bro. <laughs> yup, that's what I'm fucking talking about. Yeah, and you hit the stone edge. Hell yeah. I basically get a free swap into Polyrath here just because I know the Kangaskhan is going to go for a fake out, but because of the Yanmega situation, I just gotta hope that this double edge doesn't crit. I'm, like, really pushing my luck on this, huh? Same deal as before. We just swapped to Rhyperior to tank the obvious fake out, and the Perugly doesn't have anything super effective on us. It could put us to sleep, but our defense is so high that it doesn't really concern me. Uh, a single hammer arm is enough to take him out. Somehow. Yo, is this dude for real? What? What? I'm gonna need another Sucker Punch to take this Bronzong out. I have no idea how much this is gonna... Okay, yeah, uh, never mind. Like I said, it, this is like the least threatening Pokemon that you could run into. Yo, holy guacamole, Lucas. Are you okay? We were so worried about you. I, I, I'm okay, but that was the most stressful experience of my life. I'm definitely going to need a few minutes to relax. Well, since he's resting up, I'm just going to head up to Lake Acuity so I can check on Goober. Just gotta head back through the stupid mountain. Actually, the best part about coming back up this way is this NPC will give you the TM4 Ice Beam if you have five gym badges. This time, though, we can actually head up to Route 217. Oh, what the heck? Why why are you here? I'm, you're in a t-shirt and you're not even wearing shoes. Why are you here? Duh, I'm doing a Pokey fans collab with Candace. Dick fit in your mouth. <laughs> the gym leader, you ass. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. Whoa, I've got to keep on moving. It took a while for me to get him, but I finally got my Sneasel back. And then if you take like two steps up, then you get to Acuity Lakefront and you get another encounter, which in my case, it's a Pylos one. <laughs> they made your mom a Pokemon. Yo, what's up, Goober? Hey, noob. Just letting you know I went ahead and got the gym badge, which means I can use Rock Climb and you cannot talk to me when you get good scrub. That was kind of rude. After our brief expedition, we finally made it to Snowpoint City, but there are some tremors going on, which makes me question what's going on over at the temple. However, there is a tough double battle before we can gain entry to the temple. The tough part about this fight is you don't want to line the Blissey up with any of the other threats in the back, uh, but the Heracross loves to go for Protect. Even if the Heracross went to attack me and didn't Protect, I still would have been fine. Uh, faking out the Blissey allows my Blaziken to set up a sword stance. A Drain Punch kills the Blissey, and a Blaze Kick kills the Heracross. So for Alligator, while it also has a dark typing in this game, uh, it comes in and intimidates both of my guys, and it's kind of unpredictable what uh, the opposing Mons could do here. So I'm just gonna go for a double swap. Azumarill's just gonna eat an Earth Power, and Poliwrath avoids being attacked because it has Water Absorb. Typhlosion protects like a bitch, and for Alligator Aqua Tails my Azumarill. Azumarill isn't strong enough to one-shot the Feraligator with the Drain Punch, but it does more than enough to get a clean 2KO. Typhlosion continues to protect himself from moves in game, but cannot protect himself from the allegations. Azumarill just eats another Aqua Tail and then finishes off the Feraligator. 
I go for a double swap again, this time into my Roserade and my Steelix. It's the best I can really do without losing any Mons that I actually care about. Uh, unluckily, I switch my Roserade into an extra Sensory, which doesn't kill, but takes me well below half. And Steelix is just gonna eat this Petal Dance. And by eat, I mean he might as well be dead. I can't afford to lose momentum in this fight, so I'm just gonna one-shot the Meganium with a Sludge Bomb because it's Grass and Fairy type in this game. And Typhlosion kills Steelix. Okay, I'm happier losing like Steelix than I am Roserade, so this is a pretty good deal for me. Bringing in the monkey, there's nothing this Typhlosion can do to avoid being murdered. Did someone say four times weak to fighting? All right, for the Steelix death, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin or roll a random number generator uh, with the number between 1 and 30, and I'm going to eliminate one of the mons in my box. I just kept using the generator on Google, but I wasn't really satisfied with it. It didn't really like build up any suspense, so I swapped to another website. And our mon is number seven. Who's number seven? Number seven is our Matang. Eh, he, he's been kind of underwhelming. Actually, no, I want you to sit in the corner and Steelix is going to join you and you two are going to think about what you've done. Oh, also Frostlass, I'm going to put next to Mr. Weed because they're best friends. Aww. And thus we enter the temple. It's a nice quality of life thing that you don't actually need to use any HMs, at least at this point in the game. So I can get through this temple pretty easily. I also, just for the record, don't give a shit about my encounter in this temple because the only thing on the encounter table that I haven't caught yet is a jinx and i i'm i'm not gonna use a jinx like if i really need it i'll come get it but i'm not gonna use a jinx hey ladies i just came to make sure everybody's doing okay i just want to make sure no one's getting hurt yeah we're all right i think he's calmed down nice to meet you bro what my name is candace and i'll be waiting for you in the gym sorry that just Never mind. Uh, hey, you guys want to go get Taco Bell? Hell oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone at some point uh, throughout their life that's played Pokemon has either mispronounced a Pokemon's name or has been friends with people that mispronounce Pokemon names. Uh, I don't know why people when I was younger called him like Reggie Gigas. Gigas? Gigas? I thought he was Reggie Gay Gas, but that's besides the point because now I gotta go do this gym. And yes, this time I did pre-burn my Ursa Ring. This gym's fun because not only do you just get to slide back and forth and smack some balls, but if you know the pattern you have to go through, uh, you can do this entirely without fighting a single trainer. Yo, what's up, Candice? Yo, man, real quick though, before we start. Do you like my balls? Good size, smooth shape, solid density. Yeah, I'd say you got some S tier balls right here, friend. Hey, does it smell like up dog in here? What the fuck is up dog? Nothing much, bro. Just chilling. Oh, got your ass. Damn, this is going to be harder than I thought. Hail! No deal! Oh, and we avoid the blizzard? Ah, oh, what a great start. You did your job. Time for the monkey. Ow. Fake out, and I go for a drain punch because I want to gain my HP back. And the fake out did enough damage to where Abominus Snow is in kill range. Perk 30's here to do one thing and one thing only. Oh, and you wasted your turn with an aqua ring? Okay. Hit him with the perk beam. Go to sleep. Thankfully, the hail is not up to activate Glaceon Snowcloak, but because I have to recharge, it's going to get a free double team off, and it's also holding a Bright Powder, so I'm going to have to get quite lucky here, especially if it's setting up another double team. Yo, are you just going to let that slide, Perk 30? You just going to let them do you like that? Oh my god, the Glaceon is dead. All right, Perk 30, you got to recharge one more time. You just got to not die here to Frostlass. How badly do you want it, man? How badly do you want it? Lock in. Let's fucking go, baby! I want to save my Porygon for another day. So at this point in the fight, I need a safe swap, and I can't predict what Frostless is going to do. So I figured that Ursa Ring, I could live without you, but this is the end of the road for you. Are you serious right now, bruh? Monkey comes in, but even swapping into an Icicle Crash is going to be a little concerning. But I need to fake out to break the Focus Sash, and apparently I outspeed, so I just kill it with a Drain Punch. 
Yo, Candice, why are you giving that Mammoth Swine back shots? You know, at this point, I realized that my moveset on my Infernape isn't the most ideal that it could be. So I'm just going to swap over to Honchcrow to avoid the Earthquake. And then I bring in Herbert, the Human Sacrifice. See, I didn't have a move on my Infernape that could just one shot the Mammoth Swine. So I need to use an Aqua Jet from my Babarel here to lower him enough to where my Infernape can just finish him off. The trade for this, however, is your life. So thank you, Babarel, for all you did for us in the early game. Because of the berry, the, the Aqua Jet didn't do as much as I really needed it to for my Infernape, sadly enough. Um, I got a little hasty and forgot that he had Ice Shard, so I couldn't use my Porygon to finish him off either. But he goes for an Avalanche anyways, which I don't understand the AI in this game. Uh, fake out, Drain Punch, good night. And now that I got my 7th Gym Badge, I can finally go check up on Goober. After taking a sec to just fix my Infernape's moveset, I go to check up on my boy. And also in this game, Rock Climb is a rock type move, which I'm pretty sure it is in some other ROM hacks, but it's still very nice. Shh, guys, be quiet. I I'm trying to tell if Goober lost his Pokemon battle. I can't believe I lost the Pokemon battle. Ah, shit, he lost the Pokemon battle. They can't keep getting away with this. I'm gonna have to take the fight to them. I will say though, this is like a pretty impressive antenna. Like I don't think I've ever seen an antenna that looks like this. Hey kid, check out this antenna. Antenna. I must say, I am thoroughly impressed with this craftsmanship. Enough about the antenna. Give me the storage key. Never! Shit, he got away. Arg, arg, arg. Fear not, for I have plundered the key. Let's fucking go, looker! I can always count on you. All right, come on, let's go. Arg, I am afraid you will be on a solo mission, as I am a little bitch. Uh, uh, that's fine. I'm pretty good as a trainer. What are you going to do? I will be sneaking around in the shadows and letting you do all of the work. Fair enough. All righty, let us penetrate the bowels of this hideout. Arga! Look at him go, man. So inspirational. Making my way through the hideout itself isn't that big of a deal. Uh, there are two boss fights later down the road here, but for now, it's just going to be a bunch of little stupid grunts. And this is only the first part of this little dungeon because I have to battle these grunts and then I have to go get another key card and then I can enter the main building. A lot of the grunts here are avoidable anyways, but I make my way back through the basement and this time on my way out, I pick up the galactic key, which means now the real gauntlet begins. Yeah, apparently having security at the evil villain headquarters is just not a thing. At least for me, I can just kind of have my Garchomp just power his way through all of these grunts because most of the time I can just one shot them with dragon claws. Oh, there you are, Looker. Have you found anything? We have to be quiet. We can't risk any of these few hundred grunts turning their heads 90 degrees to the right and noticing us. Good point, man. I'm so glad you're here with me. Looker, what's this for? I don't know. Before we begin, I am pleased to announce that today's evil speech is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Damn, they're getting really aggressive with their marketing. Shout out to grunt number 436 for beating up a small child and taking their starly excellent work. Is there a point to this speech or? This concludes my speech. Okay. I am off to go do a lot of evil things. Peace out. Looker, I have a lot of questions, but I'm not even going to begin to ask why a hundred grunts just magically vanished from the room and didn't even notice us. Oh, thank God it's nap time. The combo of Garchomp and Home Depot is pretty sick because I can just press Earthquake with a choice band and then I can have Home Depot just clean up the mess. But I've just about explored all of the important areas, so now it's time to beat this guy's ass. Oh, what's up? Did you like my speech? Not particularly. Oh, guess I have to beat your ass. That's a pretty logical response. This Cyrus fight isn't even like the final one. This is more of just an appetizer of what's to come later on. Fortunately, I have Weavile, so I can just outspeed and one shot the Crobat. Magnezone really wants to flash cannon my Weavile, so I'm just going to soak it up with Garchomp. Thankfully, Magnezone doesn't have any like super overpowered abilities like Levitate or Sturdy, so I could just one-shot him with an Earthquake. 
Obviously, Weavile's gonna go for an ice move, and in this case, it's an ice shard. And with Technician, uh, even though it's a crit, like, that's still a respectable amount of damage. I swap in Rhyperior to take the Aerial Ace, and then I know that he can just soak up an ice shard the next turn, and I can finish off the Weavile with a superpower. Because this Honchkrow has Super Luck and a Scope Lens, and it's gonna spam Night Slash, I really don't wanna risk swapping anybody into a crit, and I could live without Rhyperior, but luckily he's going to just tank that Night Slash, not get crit, and then can return fire with the Rock Climb. Or not, okay. I mean, at least he's confused. I hope that the Honchkrow just kills himself, but he doesn't. Uh, Home Depot is just gonna soak up in the Night Slash because I decided that I wanted to try and keep Rhyperior alive. Of course, we do outspeed, so good night. I can safely swap in Infernate because the Highland Doom can't hurt me with a fire or a dark move. I mean, he went for a nasty plot though, so. You know, Cyrus tells me that he's going to head over to Mount Coronet and continue his evil plans, but apparently having a Master Ball is not part of that. I mean, like, would a Master Ball just not help with capturing the legendary Pokemon that you need to capture? I don't know. Wait, give me one sec. I got to do something. <clears throat> Penis. Hmm, I'm sure Team Galactic has all of the legal permits they need to be able to do experiments like this. The Lake Trio legendaries are notoriously shit in every aspect, but I do like their designs and I think Mesprit's pretty cool, so that's enough justification for me to warrant rescuing them. I think you guys are smart enough by now to figure out exactly what I'm about to do. Stealth Rock to break Sturdy and Sash, bring in Garchomp, he can set up light screens, I set up Swords Dance. I gotta be careful of Zen Headbutts, but as long as I'm not getting crit, then I can safely set up a second Swords Dance. And I can't die from a crit here, so let's just mow through the team. Hiya! Similar to me when I walk through the nursery at a hospital, Garchomp is just going to pick up all of these babies and shake them to death. I mean, hey, I'm gonna take what I can get. Like, there's not many fights where you could just straight up 1v6 a team like this. Man, what a tough fight. Saturn is gonna step aside and I am able to free the Lake Trio. Saturn is so embarrassed by that loss that they just use shadow magic and teleport out of the room. But that wraps up the Galactic HQ. It's time to head to Mount Coronet. I always felt like such a cool kid whenever I unlocked Rock Climb in one of the Pokemon games. <laughs> shit goes hard. Oh shit, there's a hole in the wall over there. Arg. Where do you keep coming from? I bet you didn't notice that hole in the wall over yonder. I did. That's where I'm going. It's a good thing I was here to spot it. Me, Looker, the world's greatest detective. All right, looks like we're going to have to dodge some spinners. Oh my god, he broke my ankles. It's a good thing these guys aren't threatening. I don't know if it's just because I played Run and Bun. I know I've mentioned that quite a bit, but um, I, I feel like the trainers in between areas in this game could definitely stand to be a little tougher because it just kind of seems sometimes like you're going boss fight to boss fight. Like only when you get into the late game do trainers at least get a little more challenging. You know, Team Aqua and Magma Grunts from Run and Bun uh, just have like the most absurd teams. But in this game, it's just like, <laughs> you defeated my Golbat. What if I attack you with another Golbat? Perhaps I'll switch it up and throw out a Houndoom. Or perhaps a Toxicroak? We're like one or two grunts away from Spear Pillar. Like, this one's gotta be tough, right? <laughs> oh, that's not all. They do have a Toxicroak. And a Golbat! Okay, to give the grunts credit, there is a double battle before we have to fight the big boss. It's not difficult, but hey, at least they're now attacking me in pairs. Anyways. Oh, look, it's that 10 year old again. Let's see you try and win in a two on one. Wait, Goober, you came. The name's Penis. You're goddamn right it is. Now let's kick some ass. So this battle is not a 6v6, rather it's a 12v12. And if you haven't seen this game yet, take a guess what the first two mons are. <laughs> Crobat goes for a Brave Bird. Crobat tries to get sneaky. Staraptor goes for a Brave Bird. And Crobat's fucking dead. Now this Crobat goes for a Brave Bird. Rest in peace, Staraptor. You truly were a Brave Bird. I wasn't sure if Crobat would go down before I attacked, so I Thunderbolted the Bronzong slot just because. It did good damage, but he's going to return fire with his Zen Headbutt. But you remember what I said. Uh, Bronzong is just dog shit. Crobat tells my Rattom that it's past his bedtime, and Arcanine obliterates the Bronzong. 
Yon Mega detects like a bitch and the Crobat hits me with a sludge bomb and it's not enough to have killed me with a crit, but I don't want to overstay my welcome. Azumarill is my safest swap, and the Yanmega fails to protect, so Arcanine just murders him. Good thing I was only getting hit with an Ice Beam. Now, the disadvantage of this layout is that I have my screen in the bottom right, so for a double battle like this, it's a little harder for you guys to see the exact HP that my partner is on, but I kind of get lucky here with this swap because I was just not ready for an Earth Power. Snorlax eats shit, and Mew can easily take an Earth Power. But the Sped F drop is going to be a problem. I'm not really in a position to where I can safely attack each turn, so I'm just going to keep swapping and baiting attacks so I can let Goober do all the work. Heracross fucking dies. I stand corrected. That takes care of the cat, but I was really banking on getting a lot of HP from the Perugly, so I'm going to have to do with what I get from Gastrodon, which it's not ideal, but it's enough to keep me alive for this turn. Except Kangaskhan coming in is actually perfect because he kills the Heracross with a fake out, which leaves him wide open for me to just steal all of his health. I'm very thankful for my med kit, but I am going to survive at least one more turn. Just don't get crit. Azumarill is going to get sacked with a body slam because I need to keep the momentum, but as the prophecy foretold, three days later, Mr. Weed rises from the grave and he's here to kick some ass. Not that we really need it though, because I didn't even realize that we pretty much just targeted one side down the entire time, so the rest of this fight is just a 2v1 and it's just bullying at this point. Like, I don't think putting the Sableye to sleep and hitting him with a Rock Wrecker is really necessary. <laughs> Sadly, Mr. Weed's Shadow Clone does just eat shit. All right, let's wrap it up. Water. Earth. Oh my God, there's one more. Empoleon, please kill him in one shot. Not like this. Rhyperior, no. Oh, it's inhumane. I can't watch. Oh. Um, yippee! Okay, now kill him. Unsurprisingly, with a 12v12, this fight took like 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, thank you for healing me, Goober. How kind of you. My job here is done. Wh what? No, we still have to fight. Okay. Oh, well, would you look at the time? It's evil o'clock. Cyrus, no, you don't have to do this. No, not the big red glowy ring of doom. Ha 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 ha. The ritual is complete. Behold, child, the great space balls of doom. Ha 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 ha. Yes, they are magnificent. So round, so testicular. What does that mean? Come to me, balls. Give me your power. Wait, what the fuck? No, my balls. Oh wait, this is much cooler than those balls. Nothing can stop me. Not even an unskippable cutscene. Oh fuck, an unskippable cutscene. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Cyrus, this is your last warning to cut it out or we will spin menacingly in a circle until Satan comes. No balls, you won't. Oh yeah? <laughs> Wait, stop, I'm sorry. Oh God, it's too late. I feel his presence. Heard you were talking shit. No! Cynthia, when the fuck did you get here? Not important. Let's enter this hole. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, Cynthia, where the hell are we? I think this is Brazil, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, well, Satan was kind enough to just give us a portal straight out of here, so I'll 
be right back. Damn it. All right, Cynthia, where'd you run off to? Oh, okay, there you are. Yo, this place is lit. We. Boeing. 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 Well, if you insist. Boeing. Boeing. Oh, hey, Mesprit. Huh, okay. Surely that was, like, important to the plot, right? The only part of the distortion world that's somewhat frustrating is just when you get into this labyrinth of elevators in the middle of the void, and you have no idea where to go or, like, what to do. You just kind of know that if you keep pressing these buttons, eventually you'll end up in some place. Uh, oh, hey, Cynthia. I'm just chilling. I am an interdimensional pirate sailing across the void on my platforms of rock. Okay, but, like, seriously, where the fuck do I go? Oh, okay. Cynthia, when you're telling us to split up, it makes it sound like you know what you're doing and you know where you need to go. I, I don't. So we back in the void got these slabs floating from side to side. So Side, side, to side. Okay, I think this is the right way. Oh, there you are, Cyrus. Help. I am trapped. Satan will not let me leave. I mean, there's still a portal over where I came from. Do you want me to show you if where it is? only there were a way out of here. Uh, I guess I will keep searching. Uh, all right. Running around at the speed of sound. Human, I need you to put the rock in this hole. The fate of the universe depends on it. Uh, shit, makes sense to me. Okay. Bonk. Put it in this hole right here, not the other two holes, specifically this hole. But why not the other two Do holes? Do not question me. Oh, yes. Oh, very well done, human. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Cynthia, thank God, there you are. W what do we do? I don't know how we can stop Satan. Shit. Maybe we should try putting some rocks in those holes. Why? Everyone here is so weird. Uh, human. Whee! Now push my rock. Yes, master. Got the club going up. Some of these areas are pretty cool, though. Like, I love the design of the distortion world. Don't get me wrong. It's still confusing as hell sometimes where you need to go. But like, where else in a Pokemon game do you get to like walk on walls and surf upside down? If this were a more modern Pokemon game, like maybe Gen 7 or onwards, uh, I don't think I would be able to make it through the distortion worlds without at least maybe like 30 minutes of cutscenes. But the magic of this game is that there's no cutscenes and instead I just get to immerse myself in the atmosphere instead of having a bunch of computers tell me what I need to do, see, and think. Target acquired. Houston, I am in hot pursuit of the rock. Oh. Rock hole now. Yes, Commander. Yes, put it in. Put it in my hole. Yes. Meow. Human, make haste. My hole is hungry, gaping, and quivering for your rock. Ugh. All right, job's done, I guess. There he is. There's actually two fights here. I don't just have to fight Cyrus. First, I have to fight the legendaries. I'm really not worried. This is the easy part. Level 70, I really don't care. That's not going to stop me. Fake out the Dialga, and then Choice Band Dragon Claw the Palkia. Next turn, we punch the Giraffe. He lives on 1 HP, but we finish him with a Dragon Claw. Okay, literally. How the fuck? It's because I'm the GOAT, Cyrus. Nah, fam. I'm going to have to beat your ass now. Cyrus' team here is basically the same as before, but he did swap around some items and add a Gyarados onto his team. I couldn't swap my lead, so I have to switch over to Jolteon, but Crobat is going to U-turn out into Punch Crow? Uh, okay. That must have been a mistake, right? Cyrus, are you fucking stupid? Ah, damn, you almost lived. Cyrus, stop! Oh, yeah, you just knew he was going to live on one. And you're just going to kill yourself anyways. Jolteon, you die here, right? <sighs> Rest in peace, my soldier. Yeah, so all three of Cyrus's last mons just died a monkey. Weavile does have a Focus Sash this time, though, so a Fake Out breaks that, and then Bastiodon can swap into whatever he throws at me and kill with a Stone Edge. Just like last time Houndoom comes in, I swap in the monkey while he goes for a Nasty Plot, and then I beat the shit out of the dog. Oh no, a Magnezone in the back. Goodbye. 
Cyrus, I don't know what the fuck you were thinking that fight, sending out all those flying types against my Jolteon, but... You got lucky. I, you have some learning to do. All right, well, I'm going to go hang out with Satan real quick. Hey, Satan. What is up, my slime? Time to lock in. Whew, that was close. You did it. You passed Satan's vibe check. You saved us all. All in a day's work. You're a punk bitch. Fair enough. What's the point of having a Pokemon champion if you're just gonna ask the 10 year old for help? Oh, uh, a Chimeco encounter. Yay. I should go check in with the professor. Alt, you've come back. You, you, you leave me speechless. You've done it. You really have done it. Never has my heart pounded this hard for so long in my 60 years of living. <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you that bad. Almost as hard as I was pounding your mom last night. Dude, all right, I'm heading to Sunny Shore. Now, after the Distortion World events, there are a few extra encounters sprinkled around the region. I'm not gonna get all of them, I just wanna get one of them. I'm really excited for the new movie, I exclaimed with excitement. Little did I know, it would be a feature, a creature feature, featuring the creature. Guys, unknown is fucking dead. Oh well. Okay, but just like imagine my disappointment when I get my encounter and it's a chat hot and I spent like half an hour trying to figure out how to get the mic feature to work for chatter. The only things I could find online were like decade old articles of people asking like, how do I get my mic to work so I can blow into it? Mm, I don't know. I guess we'll just continue on to Sunny Shore. The Pikachu fan club. Uh... This isn't really much of a fan club. This is just like one guy. But after bodying the one required trainer on this route, we make our way to Sunny Shore. Hey friend, I'm the fire type elite four member. I love fire type Pokemon, all three of them, toodles. The gym leader here is feeling a little bit sad. So I got to go to the lighthouse to cheer him up. Oh man, I'm quite depressed. Oh, cheer up, man. Turn that frown upside down. Wow, that helped. I'm feeling quite happy now. Yippee. Okay, now we can battle him. The gym has three rooms, uh, the puzzles the same in each room, but it gets progressively more and more complicated, and a lot of the trainers in here are pushovers. The third room, though, is a little more confusing. Other than the trainers that get in the way, you gotta come up by the gym leader, spin stuff around, but you can't go directly to the leader. Instead, you have to go past him, down this path on the right side of the room, and then just spin one of the starting platforms at the beginning of the room. Then, you can run back up along the right side of the room, and it takes you right to the leader. Thanks for cheering me up back there, but now I'm I'm going to have to serve you up a knuckle sandwich. I'm going to beat you to death. Volkner's going to lead with a Jolteon that has a Focus Sash, and I'm just going to whip out Garchomp. And he's level 65, but that's just because I mopped all of the trainers in this gym. All Jolteon can really do is hit me with a Shadow Ball, and I'm just going to hit them back with a Dragon Claw. It does take them down to the Focus Sash, which is perfect because now Volkner is going to use a potion. It's not going to save you, though. You're still dead. Luxray has a choice band and it's gonna lock itself into Ice Fang, so as long as I don't get frozen, we're good. Swag, get out of here. At this point, I decided I'm just gonna start sacking some of the mons that I have in the box, so I'm just gonna bring in my Perugly to tank the Thunderbolt. Whether or not Perugly dies from a crit, it doesn't matter. Perugly survives and is able to get off a body slam before going down to a Hydro Pump. This is helpful because then Garchomp could come in and finish the job. Once again, Volkner's switch in is going to want to target me with an ice move, so I just swap in Infernape to hopefully not get frozen. Avoiding the freeze and crit combined with Infernape having a life orb, and I have enough attack and HP remaining to just take out the Electivire. Originally, Gardevoir was going to take out Electivire, but now they're just going to serve as a pivot. And they're able to soak up the Thunderbolt, but they can't do it without getting paralyzed. So just by swapping in Rattom, I can get hit by a Thunderbolt, and Motor Drive is going to raise my speed. Now that I outspeed Raichu, and its highest damaging move against me is Surf, it's safe to say that I could just outdamage this thing, and it's only a matter of turns until it goes down. Volkner, was that really necessary? Two more Shadow Balls will do the trick. We come face to face, brother. Rattom's gonna wanna go for an overheat, but it does have a white herb to get rid of the minus two special attack reduction, so it can hit me again with a full power one next turn. Obviously, I don't want Garchomp to get hit by that, but Rattom decides to just go for a Will-O-Wisp this turn. Perk 30, this is your chance to shine. I need you to lock in. Don't die on me now. You can't die on me now. 
Yes! Let's fucking go, baby! Oh. Really? This <laughs> this is how you die? Okay. It's a good thing Infernape has enough health to be able to get off a fake out and a close combat. Not even close. Did somebody say peanut butter? We're almost there. I could practically smell victory and perhaps a road? Maybe a road that is victorious? Maybe it's victory road? I hope I'm victorious. All right, let's get this bread. I just gotta make sure to avoid all of the swimmers on this route, but it's not a big deal because most of them just have like water and flying types anyways, and it's nothing that Rattam can't handle. Oh no, and a water and ground type? If only I had a grass move. It's just a pretty quick route, but we finally made it to the entrance of Victory Road. Why are you here? Why are you watching this video? How did you make it this far? What are you doing? You know what? I'm so pissed off. I'm just gonna have to rap about it. Yeah, my addiction to banging Pokemon is feral. I'm sexually attracted to Bidoof and Babarel. And you don't wanna know what I would do to Meryl. I'll pull up on your crew while I'm riding Aerodactyl. I know you think it's funny that I wanna fuck Lopunny. And while I'm at it, I'll have all my swallowing to Luvani. There are no rules against the Pokemon, so I guess it's time I get a Vaporeon. I stay hard just like Duraludon. You already know what the fuck is going on. Nix. Word. I'm giving them dicks. Wiener so hard, I call it my boss stick. I'ma use my firestone on my volt picks, and maybe while I'm at it, evolve a swirl it. Slur puff, yeah, I can't get enough. Might go ahead and bang a jigglypuff. And if I get curious, I'll hit up jump bluff. I can't stop putting my wiener in stuff. And even come Fay, I'll always remember stuff that ho like it's the end of November. I never knew that I could go for this long. Balls made of steel, call me Bronze Song. Given all these hoes by massive pokey schlong, so I hope you enjoyed my degenerate song. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with my life. Sorry you guys had to hear that, but actually I'm not sorry because that shit went hard. Typically this part of Victory Road is saved for after the Elite Four, but in this ROM you have to go down this path and complete it before you can challenge the Elite Four. We just have to beat Marley real quick. Marley's team has a lot of fast mons, so I'm gonna have to take advantage of putting a choice scarf on Rattam. Perish. My low tick is going to swap into an Icicle Crash, and it's gonna do a surprising amount of damage for it not being a critical hit. If my low tick dies, it's not the end of the world, but I would like to live here. Whew, well, that definitely makes things a little more simple. My big boner is going to be Electrode's weakness because he only has Light Screen, Thunder Wave, Thunderbolt, and Explosion, so the only thing he can do is kill himself. But not if I kill him first. I'm swapping in Celebi just to eat this Energy Ball, but I'm also going to get hit with a Dragon Pulse on the next turn. And I'm going to be able to get a Psychic off, but I have a Life Orb and that's going to chip away some of my health, so... I really can't stay in much longer. It's fine though, because Rattam can just eat a Dragon Pulse and because I have a Choice Scarf, I can outspeed and kill with Air Slash. Arcanine's gonna come out and yet again, it is another opportunity for us to bring out the boner. You know, just as long as we don't die to a close combat. Let's fucking go, baby. Hashtag stay hard. The Crobat in the back is not going to be a problem for us whatsoever because Empoleon just hard counters it. I just gotta tank a few Brave Birds while I Ice Beam him to death. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I have no desire to talk about this cave part. I just don't care. This part of the story is unimportant to me. I believe that there are more pressing issues to address. I mean, like this route would normally be kind of tough if you actually had to battle any of the trainers here. So like, look, you can literally just walk around that guy. I don't know why. Lucas, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, hey, I was just admiring this big white rock. Lucas, am I gonna have to kick your ass again? Please, oh God, please no. This Alex Zam is really fast, so I have to put a Choice Scarf on Weavile to outspeed in one shot. I'm gonna swap over to Roserade to tank this play rough, but even without a crit, it's gonna do like half of my health, which is kind of scary, but I'm just gonna splooge on him. 
To tank the random move from Mammoth Swine, I swapped to Mew, but he's going to whiff the Icicle Crash. I'm just going to bring out Blaziken because if he dies, I really don't care because spoilers, he's not coming to the Elite Four. The Icicle Crash does about half of my health, and I love Brave Nature Blaziken because the Mammoth Swine outspeeds me, but he whiffs the Icicle Crash anyways. So, uh, cool, I guess. Roserade's gonna come back to tank the obvious water move, and I have enough HP remaining to where I can outspeed and one-shot with the energy ball. My day is ruined every time I see this Pokemon. This Licky Licky only has a normal fighting and ground move, but Gengar has Levitate in this generation, so there is literally nothing he can do about it. Not much I can do here to swap into Torterra, so I'm just gonna have to sacrifice my Gengar. Y'all about to see a pro gamer move. I did not know that Avalanche gave minus four priority, but the Torterra misses Stone Edge anyways. <laughs> Let's just say that was calculated and planned from the start. I tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, did it really even matter? No, you still suck. Oh, you're a meanie head. Hey, you know what? Lucas is kind of right. This is a pretty cool rock. Well, there's only one more place for me to go. I must claim my throne and my rightful position as the Pokemon champion. I've never seen this guy before. Wait. Oh, this guy's going to give me every TM? Oh, shit. Okay. My game had to load for like a minute, but shit, he wasn't lying. He did really just give me literally everything, huh? However, before I can spend my time planning for the Elite Four, there's just some stuff that I got to do. Oh, hey, I'm stuff. Oh, my God, Goober, no. Ha ha ha, Alt, you are banging my son. He's not going to be here for long. Quick, editor, put the balls on him. Mr. Raptor has a choice scarf, and I'm not going to bother trying to outspeed it. Instead, I'm just going to let him lock himself into Brave Bird, and then Rhyperior can take him out. Now, you'd think that the Berloom would just outspeed and kill me with a bullet seed, but no, he just decides to go for a spore, so... Sadly, this does mean that I have to let Roserade go because if I try to pivot and save her, it's just gonna cause more problems further down the road. I was hoping for the one or two turn wake up, but it doesn't happen. Not to worry though, this thing just gets vaporized by monkey. Uh, interesting choice. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye? I'm confused. The documentation says you have an Azumarill. Why are you not sending that out? All right, whatever, I guess. Sorry, Rhyperior. Looks like you have to bite the bullet. Now I can just swap in Home Depot and insta-kill this thing. It says nothing about an Arcanine. What? All right, well, sorry, Banana Man. Uh, because the documentation is wrong, uh, you have to pay with your life. That was necessary because now the Arcanine is low enough to where I can kill with a close combat. That's great and all that you beat me, but I swear if you lose this run in the Elite Four, I will put my willy in your bum. <laughs> so how the Elite Four works in Renegade Platinum is each Elite Four member has four different teams that they can have. So you can't prepare exactly for what they're gonna have, Rather, you just need to kind of have like good type coverage for all of the different possibilities. So logically, I came to just one conclusion. I'm going to have to bring back an old friend. No, not you, Marley. Go the fuck away. I just got to tell this big white rock uh, exactly who or what I am thankful for. Given that I am recording this on Thanksgiving, it is appropriate that I thank everything and everyone who is here to support me. But like no none of that comes close to the beefy five layer burrito from Taco Bell. Hell yeah, Professor Oak. I am so grateful for Taco Bell, especially all of the times that it caused me to destroy my bathroom. Shimin, hi, baby. <laughs> it's been a while, my friend. I need to recruit you for my team. No, he's just a baby. Shabloink. Welcome back, Flashbang. Oh, what's up, Shaman? Hey, baby. Ah, <sighs> good times, good memories. If you talk to this NPC with a shaman in your party, then they will give you the Grassadia flower. Grassadia? Grassidea? I don't fucking know. I just need to keep myself motivated through this gauntlet of pain, so I'm gonna draw myself just a little rocket ship. Finishing touches. Um, okay. Yeah, no, that looks pretty good. And a smiley face. I'm so glad that in this region, they don't require you to put all of the badges in your butthole. Anyways. It's game time. I don't want to show you the team right now. I got to reveal it in the battle. I mean, you already know like at least one of them, but yo, man, I thought for sure you would get fired after you lost that battle to me, which is crazy because you're about to lose a second time.
Aaron can have four different possible leads, so I had to pick the best mod of my party that could realistically handle each of them. In this case, it's your boy Home Depot. Home Depot's about to cook this fool. Well, now that I know Aaron's lead, I know how I can move around his team. I still need two more Cacleons. We're gonna eat this obvious Stone Edge, and then the next turn we outspeed and immediately kill him with a Flash Cannon. There's a couple different things Heracross can go for, but I have Choice Specs and it has a Choice Scarf. Thankfully, he does go for a close combat, but I, uh, I don't resist it anymore. <sighs> okay. I needed a Fire type for this Elite Four team, and none of the firefighting types really seemed to fit with what I was trying to build. Uh, so I guess that's the one disadvantage here is that I lose out on that unique flying and electric typing. Take him out, Mr. President. We eat a cross poison and then we earth some quake. This Vespa Quinn is really annoying. Uh, this just turned into a stall war with my Suicune. Mm -hmm. uh, just spamming Calm Mind while this thing spams Defend Order. I mean, like, I was just hitting him with an Ice Beam, but doing no damage, but then I would freeze him, and then I would just spam Calm Mind. So, uh, because Suicune has leftovers, I'm still sitting at almost full health, and I have three Calm Minds up, so I figured, you know what, let's just hit him with an Ice Beam. And... Like, that was just unnecessary, man. Like, he was already dead. Well, I won that fight. I've healed up my guys, and I even adjusted some moves. So, there's only one thing left to do. Whee! Bend over, Grandma. Touch your toes. I'll show you where the creature goes. Sand? No deal. Okay, I promise you, I don't care about the Stealth Rocks. Cock beam. You would think that an Ice Beam from Suicune would kill this thing, but hey, the calculator said no, so fuck him up, Flashbang. Ah, shit, I broke my promise. It's worth it, though, because this Wood Hammer just doesn't even affect us. Garchomp comes in because he's going to eat the Stone Edge, and then Home Depot comes in because he's going to avoid the Earthquake or just get Leech Seeded. Either way, the rain stops, and we can kill him with an Overheat. Choice Band Rhyperior is tough, but because it can't Earthquake, Jirachi can just tank whatever it throws at me. The next turn, I just go for a Protect because I have Leftovers on, and I just want to get a little more health. <laughs> this camera up has Explosion, Yawn, Overheat, and Earth Power, and it has a Focus Sash, so I gotta be a little careful here. Psych! He misses the Overheat! Cock Beam! Focus Sash down! No, I don't want to go to bed! Cock Beam! Well, Suicune's asleep, so I'm just gonna swap to Garchomp and just eat this wood hammer. Uh, a crit doesn't worry me, but I, I'm not even sure if the AI in this game goes for Sucker Punch. I swear, I've never seen them do it. Now, I just wanted to be extra safe because I wasn't sure exactly what the Gliscor would do to my Suicune, but I needed to switch out. I bring in Shaman, who's going to take some of the Stealth Rocks damage, but is going to avoid the Earthquake. I could have went to Rattam instead of Shaman because uh, I'm going to one-shot him with a Choice Specs Overheat, but I didn't want to risk Stealth Rocks or and maybe like an X-Scissor crit. I don't know. What I do is still safe, though, because Drapion is just going to eat the X-Scissor, and then because it's a guaranteed Earthquake, now I'll just bring him in. It's just very convenient for this Gliscor to be built defensively and have no investment into special defense. Alright, thanks, Grandma. I'll catch you later. I don't know. Something tells me that this guy really likes Fire-type Pokemon. Of the four different teams that Flint could be using, I get the one where he only has three actual Fire-type Pokemon, so awesome. Yay. A shake, a shake, a shake. Fuck, dude, I'm about to act up. I go for an earthquake while the low punny goes for a sunny day. That shit's terrifying, man. I'm so scared of Steelix in the sun. But because I outspeed, just two more earthquakes and the low punny goes down. Oh no! I can't hit the Driflim with earthquake! Fuck him up, microwave oven. Damn, and you whiff the hurricane? That's embarrassing. Ka chow. Mm. It appears I forgot about the berry. I mean, it's whatever, because I'll just kill him next turn. <laughs> it appears that I have forgotten about the ability Unburden. <laughs> Ka-chow. Sadly, though, I do have a life orb on. 
Thank you, Home Depot, for your service. Wow, what an intense conclusion to this fight. Now, Home Depot pretty much already did his job for the first two to three Elite Four members. Uh, now is where we're gonna see more of the other Mons come to shine. I'm not gonna bore you guys with making you watch me change moves and make sure everybody has enough PP. Get it, PP? Cause peanut. Hey, it's me, Lucian, and I'm really smart because I actually just finished reading a book the other day. Can you put the book down? I don't know either, guys. Jurafric comes in and also dies to a flash cannon, but I'm not gonna be able to sweep the fight with Jirachi. I looked at the wrong fucking mon. I didn't see this thing had a choice scarf on it, dude. But critical hits aren't real and they can't hurt you. I know that Starmie can't go for an Ice Beam, so I'm just gonna swap over to Shaman, but they missed the Hydro Pump anyways. Just gonna smack him with my Energetic Ball. Executor gave me a mini heart attack when the air slash left him on just like one HP. Uh oh. This may be payback for what I did to my previous Executor. Nah, I'm just fucking kidding. Yeah, you would use a full restore, you book reading nerd. In reality, the safest thing that I could have done was just swap to Drapion to begin with, but I just, I believed in my shaman, man. They're just having a bad day. Clearly not. And just like all of the other Elite Four members, Cynthia has four different teams. But at the same time, champion fights are easier because you can just start to sack some of your mons. Alright, Cynthia, I'ma beat yo cheeks. Is that a threat or a promise? Yes. Alright, bet. Of the four teams that Cynthia can have, I ended up getting the most standard one possible which isn't the best look because this is not a great lead. Not a worry though, this just means that Drapion, you're gonna have to go down with the ship. I'm able to hit through the first confusion, but Spiritomb immediately just fires back with a Dark Pulse. Getting crit sucks, but it's not the end of the world. We're gonna manage to hit through the next confusion as well, but this time Spiritomb is going to burn us. Miraculously, I managed to not hit myself in confusion, but because of the burn, I can't kill a spirit tomb. This lets them go for a rest. And yeah, they have a Lumberry. I'm just gonna save Drapion for later so I can throw a corpse at Cynthia when I need to, and Shaman's just gonna come in and eat a Dark Pulse real quick. That's manageable. It was very important that I taught Shaman Dazzle and Gleam before this fight. It's not gonna be enough to one hit kill, but I'm not really sure if I'm incredibly lucky or unlucky this fight because the spear tomb ends up whiffing the Will-O-Wisp. I'm gonna swap into Jirachi here because the Togekiss has Moonblast and Air Slash and I can tank both of those. But now we got the big brain play coming in. I outspeed Togekiss, so I know that it's gonna wanna hit me with a Thunder Wave, so I swap over to Drapion, who can't be hit by it. Keeping Drapion alive came in clutch here because this cross poison damage is going to be very helpful for getting rid of this Togekiss. But thank you for your service, Drapion. I will see you in the Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, I was a little wrong, and the flash cannon from Jirachi is just barely not going to kill the Togekiss, which means I am going to have to deal with the paralysis. But that doesn't change the fact that Togekiss dies to another flash cannon. I thought I would have to sack against the Garchomp, but I checked, and my Garchomp actually just outspeeds her Garchomp. So, toodles. Milo Tick comes out, which means it's time for yet another stall war with the creature. Mmm, yummy Ice Beam. Milotic has Surf, Ice Beam, Recover, and Hypnosis, so there's nothing they can really do to damage me, especially considering that I have leftovers. This shit got so bad that even after six Call Mines, I had to set up Rain just so my Scald would do even more damage because this thing refused to die. That shit took so long, I was deadass just playing Clash of Clans while I was clicking Scald every turn. 
Cynthia's last two mons just have no chance against me, so I'm just curious what a Leaf Storm will do to me if I'm plus six in special defense. Aw, that was cute. Look, man, I feel bad. Lucario, just kill me. <laughs> All right, Chop Chop, let's get me in the Hall of Fame. Bro, hurry up. You're slow as shit. Rowan, when the fuck did you get here? Wow, Alt. That battle was fantastic. Wait, you were watching? I didn't see you. I am always watching you, Alt. Okay. And just like that, I finally get to give Cynthia my balls. Well, this is definitely fun. Uh, I know it's not a standard uh, hardcore Nuzlocke like other people do, where it's like, meh, no mythicals, no legendaries, uh, no weather moves, no setup moves, no anything, meh. Hardcore Nuzlocke rules means, he, rule one, you are not allowed to have fun. Sorry, guys, I just actually like having fun. I don't really enjoy just cock and ball torture every time I play a video game. For me, it's more so about, like, who are the mons that I never actually get to use in a regular playthrough of Pokemon? Like, how often do you just get to, like, whip out a Suicune in a Nuzlocke? You know, like, that shit's fun. But in the end, we have the Dream Team. Well, I mean, that marks the end of this playthrough. Um, <laughs> I mean, this was fun. I, I love Gen 4. I love Platinum. I just love everything about this. But like I said at the beginning of the video, and, you know, I've kind of said in passing, this, uh, this took me a long time. I did this just by myself, spending hours at my computer just kind of making stupid jokes because it's what I enjoy. Um, I enjoy making myself laugh and I enjoy making other people laugh. So if it means I have to spend an absurd amount of time making a video like this just so, you know, someone can throw this on and, you know, have a good couple hours and have a few laughs, then you know, it's a dub for me. But if you made it this far and you're listening to me yap like this right now, um, thank you so much for the support. Um, every like, every comment, every subscription, fuck man, every view, um, it makes me feel good about what I'm doing. And I would love nothing more than to, you know, just continue not just making videos like this, but doing silly stuff uh, like I'll be streaming again come the beginning of 2025 and I want to do stuff that actively involves the people that support me. I don't like the idea of me just kind of being someone that posts a video and doesn't really interact with people. Rather, I enjoy uh, having a community and, you know, kind of bringing people together just to have a laugh. You know, I hope that makes sense what I'm trying to say, but um, if there's anything to take away from this view as the viewer is just thank you for your support and I will keep doing my best to make more and better content. I've spent a lot of my life feeling lonely, so whatever I can do to help people feel a little less lonely and you know maybe be the highlight of someone's day if they see an alt video posted or they see me streaming, whatever I can do to help. Um, I just wanna do whatever is in my power to bring together a community of people that all just like to have a laugh and make penis jokes together. But to end it all, once again, thank you guys so much for the support. Um, the next video, I'll, I'll probably, you know, take a little bit of a break before I do my next Pokemon video. I have an idea for something else that I want to do beforehand, but uh, there will be more stuff like this in the future. And uh, trust me, I, I have a lot of really stupid ideas, so... You, you guys have a lot to look forward to. So, peace out. Yeah, last thing, I decided to just kind of like categorize some of the guys in my box based off of like how useful I thought they were. I mean, we got the standard box of mons that fainted, you know, uh, rest in peace, I guess. I don't know, I don't really care about these guys. And then the box of mons that fainted that I thought were legitimately good and that I was pretty sad about having to lose. Like these mons could have all been contenders to come to the Elite Four if, you, if I really wanted to. And then this is the box of mons that I thought were just mid. Um, I was doing a little experimenting with Flygon. He was going to originally be on the Elite Four team, but I decided that he just didn't really do much. Uh, Matang is just dog shit and not worth waiting for Metagross, but um, both the Water Fairy types were eh, they were all right. 
Um, Nido King never came to a single fight. That guy's trash. And Chatot. And Chatter doesn't work on Chatot, so that guy sucks. But who really cares, baby? Because we got the goats. I feel like this is kind of obvious, though. Um, but I think the one that is a little surprising is the Mighty Anna. Um, I do think that instead of just Mighty Anna there, I feel like the Haunch Crow should come as well because these guys both just kind of like clocked in through a sucker punch and then dipped, you know, like they, they were pretty reliable whenever I needed them. Um, don't worry about this box. Goobus. Okay, bye. Wobbly, wobbly, wop, wobble, wobble, stack, stack in my paper. My wallet look like a bobble.